Friday. <laughs> Always wanted to say that. I just said it. It's Friday, y'all. Come on in here. Woo, seems like we was just in here, don't it? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How y'all feel out there, man? How is everybody? How's everybody doing today? I see we got the crew up in here. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. What's up, Erica Martinez? Miss P. Miss P, how you be? Leandra, I missed you last night. Leandra, we was jumping on the dark. Come on, man. Had a good one last night, y'all. What's up, Kimberly Montano? You won my court, you won, I won my court case this morning, and now I'm suing. Whoa! There you go, Kimberly. Spread the love. What's up, Chelly? I see you, Chelly. Yeah. Don't it, Miss P? Don't it sound amazing? <laughs> Roxanne, what's up, Roxanne? How you feel, Roxanne? What's up with you, Kanita? How you feel, Kanita? Uh huh. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Is that you, Portia? Oh! What's up, Portia? Everybody, come on in and hit the like button. Hit the like button first and foremost. Do that. Do that. Man, hit that like button. Let's get this thing fired up in here. Let's get this thing fired up in here. We are the place where the beautiful, incredible energy lives. It stays here with us. That's what we do every single day. Every single day, y'all. Oh! <laughs> are you ready? It's going to be a jam in here tonight, y'all. Yes, we are going to talk about it. Yes, we are. We're going to get it off the chest. We're going to get it off the chest. Uh-huh. What's up, Erica? Connie Bond's up in here. Everybody check in. I need to see you. Come on. What's up, Janet Cross? Michelle Wilkes Flores. What's up, Connie? <laughs> How you feel, Connie? Breakthrough 101. So you still catching up on last night? Man, look here. Woo. We had a time last night, y'all. <laughs> we had a time last night. Talk to him, Chelly. Queen Chelly in here. Ha ha ha. Megal Kern. What's up, Kern? Tanya Woods. Tanya. Hey, guys, listen. Y'all gonna have to give me a pass on some things. I, I might tell you I'm gonna call you or call you back. And it just get caught up in the shuffle, man. I, whew, I don't have my assistant anymore. You know, she passed. She was keeping me on top of stuff like that. Uh, 
We're going to keep doing what we're doing, though, y'all. We're going to keep on doing what we're doing. It's so good to see y'all. What's up, Max? I miss you too, Portia. Yes, indeed. It's Friday. It's our day. What's up, Marisha? Marisha J. What's up, Monica Taylor? Deb. How you feel, Deb? It's a happy Friday, y'all. Kendall Urban in here. Kendall Urban, what's up, Kimberly? Connie, Connie, Connie. What's up, Jennifer? Finago. What's up, Finago? Tanya Woods. Seven months, no contact. Got Hoover today. Tanya, got that Hoover today. Woo, boy. Y'all know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop telling y'all to be no contact. Because <laughs> some of us secretly want to narc back. Not saying you, Tanya. I ain't talking about you. But some of us secretly want the narc to reach back out. And they like, wow, that really works. Listen, it works because she also really wants to get better. She really don't want to deal with the narc no more. That's a requirement. Okay? That's a requirement. Part of the scenario is not just one part. Say, I didn't touch or click. Left his ASS hanging with his message. No contact with a lifetime to go. Rebuke them. Are y'all listening to what Tanya is saying over here? Okay. Whoa, Kanita said, I struck lightning on the light. Let's spark it up and drag this trifling threat ball. Yes, we will. What's up, Deb? What's up, Mags? Kern, talk to him. What's up, Denise Den? Vanessa Marie. What's up, Charmaine? In Tasmania. We got it going on in Tasmania. Y'all better hit that like button. You hear me? What's up, James Gathright? Wakanda 21. We won, champ. My main man, Will. Will, the real deal, Will. What's happening, champ? What's up, phenomenal mommy? James. What's good, man? Y'all just don't know what it do for a fella when I see everybody on time, everybody in the huddle, like, like you always been, like you need to be. What's up, Miss Ash? Phenomenal mommy, Wakanda 21, Confidence 24. What's up, Yolanda? Hey, Esther, what it do? I see you, Erica. Tanya Burnett. What's up, do Rob? Long time. Glad to see you. What's up, Janet Cross? Shlisa? Shlisa Evans. What's up, Shlisa? Hey, Sonia Harmon. Jennifer, Kathy. Oh, oh, oh. What's up, Mike Dion? Tia's kitchen up in here. Talk to him, Miss P. What's up, Charles Spearman? Yeah. Connie Bonds, Connie. What's up, Erica? Diana Trujillo. Woo! You from New Mexico? All right, all right. We got the family checking in from all over. Vanessa Marie, it's hammer time, cat. No bra. 3 a.m. That's love right there, y'all. 
That's love right there. Trust. I, I got to shout you out. You stayed up to three in the morning. Yeah. And we gonna come with that fire in here because I know what you're here for. I know what you're here for, and I got it. <laughs> I know what you're here for. I got it, and I'm gonna give it to you. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. What's up, Veronica? I see you. She always called me by my government name. Yeah. Do what it do, Veronica. Queen of self-love. I see you. I see you. Danita! Oh, somebody. Hey, Danita, you was on fire last night. Phoenix, and it's hot in Phoenix, too. Ooh. What's up, Kimberly? Miss CFP. What's up with you? Sonia Jackson. What's up, Pac-Man? Brown eyes. What's up, Melissa? Honey. Jelly. Kathy. Oh, oh, oh. What's up, Kern? Love, laugh, and live, y'all. Talk to him. What's up, Lawless? That go murder? Murder. Murder, I called you about four times on the chat last night. Let me hang it out here. Kara Stone in here. Haka in the house. What's up, Haka? Kanita. I see you, Michelle Wilkes. I see you. Talk to him, Miss B. Monica Tate in here. What's up, Yolanda Barty? Fernando. What's up, Priscilla? Jackie Dizel. Man, Miss Ash, we miss you. Where is closest you go? Can you please identify yourself? Ibaraz, Zion, Zion. <laughs> That's right. We're about to get it in. We're about to get it in. What's up, Sheree? I see you. Andriana. Okay. Two years. No contact. Y'all see that? Two years. What's up, Teresa? Esther. Oh, hey, Esther, we had a time last night. Woo! What's up, Patrice? What's really going on? What's really good? SC, what it do? Portia, oh! What's up, Rhonda Buchanan? Hey, Deb, what it do? Man, let's get, we're going to get this thing smoking right here, right now. We're not holding back nothing, okay? I see you, Red. Miss Angie B, hey, that's me. I can rock you so dangerously. Go do it. Go do it. <laughs> you remember the, uh, what's the name of them? Sequence. That was the name of that group right there. Amy Sky. What's up, Amy? Christine O'Connor. Lynette. What's up, Lynette? How you doing, Lynette? I know you was you was you was you had a rough week last week. Brown eyes. Say so moved in silence. The narc didn't see it coming. Oh man, boy oh boy oh boy, we gonna jump right in. What's up, Sun Kiss Beauty? How you doing? How you doing? Priscilla Fountain, Divine Ice Empress, spiritual guidance up in here. What's good? What's good in the neighborhood? Who? what's up, Sheila? Sheila, Priscilla? Kavita! <laughs> uh, I see you, Kara Stone. Yes, indeed. Callie's mom in here. Yeah, buddy. What's up, Verlon, Verlon Mason? Oh, <laughs> what's up, champ? How you feeling? How you feeling? Everybody hit the like. Everybody hit that like. Hit, hit, hit the like. Hit, hit, hit the like. Something like that. That's the Cupid Shuffle. 
What's up, Lika? They say I lost contact. There you go. Okay, okay. I see you, Lika. What's up, Lika? From way down in South Africa. What time is it in South Africa, Lika? All right, y'all. We're going to let Shelly get us started. Woo! Danita said it's 116 degrees in Arizona today. How do y'all breathe? Do y'all walk around with like a backpack with oxygen, an oxygen tank on or something? How do you breathe in 116 degrees? I remember I felt 100 and I think it was 115 degrees in Vegas one time. It Guys, it's so hot. When you get past 110 degrees, it feels like you're eating fire. It feels like you're breathing fire. Even when you go outside in, with a fan, and, and, and look, it's so hot out there that they have fans outside blowing on you because it's so hot. It feels like you're wearing the heat. Oh my goodness, it's, it is the worst. That is, whoa. Whoa, all right, y'all. We're gonna let Shelly get us kicked off. Cause what's up, Jim? My main man Jim up in here. What's up, Roots Mama? Miss VS. Missy VS. All right, all right, all right. What's up, Divine Gemini? I see you done change your picture up and everything. What's up, Jesse? Ha <laughs> ha. Y'all better get ready. Buckle up right now. Felicia. What's up, Felicia? What's up, Chelsea James? I think I got almost everybody. What's up, Nakia? Angela Cheney in here. <clears throat> X has almost been with New Supply, a woman who willingly cheated with him for three years. Wow. So he still keeps her hidden. He tried to hover. Wow, and I've heard he's pretty miserable. Oh, well. Hey, Roos Mama, one, that's what we're going to talk about tonight because some people think the NARC is winning. Some people, some of y'all are thinking, it, admit it, you, some of us think that the NARC is winning. We're we going over, man, listen, we're going over that tonight. All right, y'all. Shelly, thanks for that super chat, Shelly. Shelly's going to start us out here tonight. Shelly said, God. Great God, how excellent is thy name. God, we thank you for surrounding us with your presence tonight in the huddle. God, heal every broken heart tonight and move us towards your greatness. Keep us encouraged and protected. Amen. And with that being said, with that being said, Whoa, Lika's 315. Hello. With that being said, this is how we're going to start tonight out, y'all. First of all, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about just a topic because I know how uncomfortable this topic is for most. And that is when you, when you get out of it, what's up, Marsha Spell? I see you. When you get out of that entanglement with the NARC, whether it was willingly or by force, by you know, by you discarded or they discarded you. The one thing that we it does, it does, it's something that's on your mind. And admitting the truth helps you live with it and get beyond it when you face it. Guys, when you face what the truth is, it can't hurt you no more. It hurts you initially. But it can't hurt you no more after that. You found out the narc is cheating. Initially, that crushed you. But you, I want you to take notice. You still breathing. You still living. Your heart's still pumping. Okay? You didn't die. You kept living. You kept winning. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. It's painful. Yes, that's a part of it. Pain is a part of it. Okay? 
We know that. Pain is a part of it. But guess what? If it, if it didn't have something to remind you of what you just did, because you played a part in that. You played a part in it. We all played a part in it. Guys, guys, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. I, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. I'm, I'm to the place in my life right now. Man, God has been so good to me. I'm at a place right now where I literally make confessions daily that I see my fault in the whole situation, you know. I see that I knew better. I have to hold myself responsible for things that I knew better at this point. Yes, I have forgiven myself, so I'm not beating myself up about it, but I knew better. I knew better with 99.9% .9 of the stuff I was dealing with. I knew better. I knew this ain't the thing. This ain't right for me. See, the one thing I'm never going to lie to myself about because, guys, that's the worst thing you could ever do is lie to yourself. That's the worst thing you could ever do is lie to yourself. That's self-betrayal. That, that's saying I have betrayed the man in the mirror. Worst thing that I've ever done was lie to myself. And the biggest lie that I've ever told myself was that I can work through this. The biggest lie I ever told myself was I can prove, I'm going to prove to this person that I can love them more than they can show me they hate me. Biggest lie I ever told myself was I'm going to love this out of this devil. I'm going to love the lies out of this devil. I'm going to love the deception out of this devil. Biggest lie I ever told myself was they can't be like this forever. Eventually, they got to get better. Biggest lie I ever told myself. I think she really loved me. Biggest lie I, I knew better. I knew that what I was seeing was not love. And I'm saying that to say that, guys, we, we have practiced self-betrayal. We have practiced self-betrayal because you're trying to love somebody and you're trying, you don't know how the parts are supposed to work on everything. And we've been told all our life, we've been groomed to be in abusive relationships, y'all. Society grooms you for an abusive relationship because it tells you things like you got to be a ride or die. It tells you things like you're going to have problems. It even, even when you had a church getting married to a narcissist or just to whoever you're getting married to. The people around you are going to tell you it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be hard and you're going to have a lot of rough days and you're going to have things that you're going to have to keep quiet. That's how people groom you in relationships. That's how people groom you into bad relationships. And that's what keeps us there for so long. We have been conditioned to stay in things that are not good and try to fix it. We are fixers. So the more the narcissist shows us that they are broken, the more we're trying to fix them. You're giving your absolute everything. You're giving your all. You're giving them your undivided attention. Every day you're giving them everything that you can, but they just validate you. Can you please validate me again like you did at the beginning of this? Y'all remember that validation? We call it the love bomb. The love bomb was validation. The validation that you are a great person. The validation that you are you were something that somebody has been waiting their entire life to meet. 
you are the knight in shining armor. You were heaven sent. When someone gives you that level of validation, you trust, especially if somebody, if they look good, you believe them. You believe them anyway because you believe you're a good person because you want good for everybody. So you're going to believe it. Okay? But, oh my gosh. Woo! Double D, a.k.a. King David, said he found out she was pregnant. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That's not, oh, boy. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, man. Sad, man. That, that, you know, Kingdom McLean, what's up, Kingdom? Guys, I want y'all to understand something. Your relationship with the narcissist is based on how you how much you feel sorry for them. It's not based on how much they love you. One thing you can never build up is your relationship with a narc and build it up and tell people how much that person loves you. When you are around people that are in actual good relationships and they're talking about, they're bragging on their relationship, you just got to sit there and be quiet. Like, oh, wow, that really exists? You start thinking they lying. <laughs> like, man, they lying. Ain't no way this just their life is that perfect. Because we've been groomed to believe that a relationship is two people that live together, cohabitate. We work together financially. We have intimacy together, but we fight. That's what narcissism has taught us about relationships. And that's what we expect. When you go into a relationship, you expect to have hard times with that person. You don't even expect this person to be on a level where they have self-control to the point where they know how to talk to you with respect and dig, treat you with respect and dignity. Shelly said, I took I take full accountability, but God, whoo, brought me back full circle. I'm stronger. I'm wiser. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Felicia said, I know. I knew. I know. I knew. I knew. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> that's right. <clears throat> that is, that's absolutely right. We knew. We had that feeling. We have a feeling that, man, yes, especially you women. Y'all, they everybody always says women have this different level of intuition. <laughs> and it's and it's obviously true because a woman knows, ladies. I'm not giving y'all no pass on this. A woman knows when that dude is messing up. Y'all know it. I'm not giving y'all no pass on this. Fellas, we don't know because we, we think that women are on a higher level than to be out here running the streets acting foolish for sex. You know what I'm saying? We look at, hey, as men, we see ourselves as barbarians half the time. You know, we just gonna keep it 100 with y'all. But we always look at women as... Nah, man, women, women don't do stuff like that. Nah, you ain't gonna catch a woman like that. <clears throat> That's just how it is. So, ladies, yes, you. Y'all, your intuition is working perfectly. Yes, your intuition is working perfectly. And, and, and guess what? Y'all know it as soon as he lied to you. You know it as soon as a man lies to you, you know it. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Say that again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I told y'all, man, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk 100 real tonight. That's how it's just gonna be from now on. 
That's how it's going to be. Y'all knew better. You knew better. Because your intuition is, is just more keen than ours. Ladies and gentlemen, we y'all know we're built differently. Y'all have strong points that we don't have. You absolutely have strong points that men, as men we don't have. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And, and I mean, it's just, it is what it is. We have different things that we, we're places where we're stronger. Y'all have different places where you are stronger. And that's the bottom line. That is the bottom line, guys. We all have places where, you know, we can show our strength. And again, <laughs> again, ladies, but, but fellas, we the same way with the intuition, man. When somebody is lying to you, first thing you say that again, what you say? We want to see you, if you're going to say it the exact same way with the same intention, you're going to change. We want to see you listening for a voice change, one octave. Because something didn't, it, something ain't right with what you just said. Something you lying, you, it's a lie in there. And you know what it is. Priscilla said, I was told not to marry my ex narc and I wanted to call it off myself. I knew it before I married him. I felt so bad even on our wedding day. But God, mm, mm, mm. hey, that could be one of the worst mistakes you ever make. Marrying somebody then, and it ain't the right thing. Guys, I, I'm, let me say this to you. The joy that comes from being married to a actual husband or an actual wife, not that crap that comes with a narcissist. That's not a marriage. Any of y'all married to a narcissist, that's not a real marriage. Don't judge marriage on that. Okay? Do not judge marriage and base it on what you're dealing with because that is, I promise you, that is not what marriage is. That's not a marriage. That's torture. That's a torture chamber. Okay? And y'all know I'm telling the truth. That's a torture chamber. What's up, Mitchell? How you feel, Mitchell Bradley? You can't do it, guys. Whoa! Tamika said, love isn't supposed to hurt repeatedly and being cheated on and stressed, shaking my head, that God is a healer. And you know what? I'm glad you said that, Tamika, because that's the video I'm putting out tomorrow. Y'all gonna see that one. Guys, if the relationship that you were in, if the person that you're dealing with was really sorry, they wouldn't keep repeating what they're doing to you. They wouldn't repeat it one time. If somebody accidentally mistreated you, they would not repeat it one time. Do you hear me? If somebody, guys, listen, if somebody really cares about you, if you really care about somebody, let, let's take, let's just flip the script. When the narcissist told you something that you may have done that hurt them, think about it. If you did it again, you did it because you meant to hurt them. You didn't do it on accident the second time. The second time was not an accident. Okay? And we still giving them chances. We still trying to figure it out. You know, Leandra said, the new supply smell like sour cream and onion feet. <laughs> Hey, leave that alone because I love sour cream and onion dip with them potato chips. Good, 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 good. I need to leave it alone. But it be calling me. Woo! That's right. 
We, that's right, Felicia. We're told that a relationship is going to take work, lots of hard work. It doesn't. Real relationships are the easiest thing you'll ever fall, you'll ever be in. The most pleasurable thing you'll ever be in. Woo! Nakia said, we have to one day realize that if we have a pulse, then God has a purpose for God. I love it, man. I love it. I love, see, I love when you jam that, that dagger in that devil. See, when, when, when the devil see that you talking back, that you're standing up for yourself, when that devil sees it, see, that's, that's, that's injury to them. That's an injury to this devil. To see y'all, everybody talking about God and Man, mm -mm. we gotta we gotta confuse that. This devil created the lie. This devil created confusion. That's how the devil was able to be the master of it because they created it. We created it. And and you know what y'all be and you know what we thinking, guys. You know, some of us, all of us, thought it at one point. And Shelly said, "Call Mari." <laughs> all of us thought like this at one point, guys. We all thought at one point. Wow, we found out that was somebody new. Man, we was in our feelings about that. We were in our feelings about the narc being with the new supply. Whoa, that thing hurt. Oh, that thing hurt when you find out oh, they with somebody and they smiling and they smiling at the and they smiling at the new supply the way they used to smile at you. Whoa, man, your heart hit your stomach. You like boom. You like whoa, whoa, man down, man down. Hold up, I gotta go to the bathroom, y'all. Okay. Whoa, man, oh man, yeah, that thing is painful initially. It's painful. The only reason that it's still, that it, that it stays painful, guys, the only reason that it stays painful is because our mind isn't made up yet. We have not made a decision that we're going to stick to it. We get weak. When we fall back, we be thinking like, man, what if this ain't the wrong thing? What if this dude telling me this stuff is wrong? And I'm no contact, and I could be talking to the dark. What if he's lying? What if he don't know? That's why I love the huddle. Because it's not just me telling you. First of all, your intuition, your inner voice is telling you, number one. And you've been dogging your inner voice. You've been dogging your inner voice. You have been dogging you. You're not listening. You're not listening to your better self. Not the worst part of you. You're listening to the worst part of you. The part that submits to your desires. And, and guys, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm going to say this because it comes back to me and I like to share the information. Even though we've talked about this many times, guys, when you open back up for that Hoover again and you break no contact on any level, you feel it. The first thing you're going to feel is loss. You're going to feel loss because you, you're going to feel like you betrayed yourself because you, you went no contact for a very solid reason. And it wasn't just one reason. You didn't just go no contact just because. You went no contact because this person repeatedly, they repeatedly dogged you. Repeatedly. And guess what? They have not stopped. They will not stop. They cannot stop. It's who they are. And in your mind, you're thinking, no, when we met, but when we met, it was so, they were so nice. They were so cool. And we could talk about anything. And they just showered me with all this attention. Attention that I hadn't felt before. 
And you know why that feels so good to us? Because you're not giving yourself any attention. And, you know, it sounds like you crazy, right? How do I give myself attention? Like, what you mean? I, I go buy myself something if I like something. Giving yourself attention isn't about going and buying yourself something. Not all the time. That's rewarding yourself. When you go buy yourself something, that's rewarding yourself. When you're giving yourself attention, you're simply following what's good for you. You're following the inner desire, not just your lower self. You're following your higher self, the one that's telling you, look, 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 look here. You know, if you're going to get it right, get it tight, we got to start eating better. We got to start thinking of more positive things. We got to start thinking more positive thoughts because so as a man think of, he is. Well, that works for all of us, men and women. The way you think, that's who you are. If you're a happy person and you want everybody to be happy, then understand your assignment in your life, man. A lot of us won't. Listen, a lot of us take so long to go through what we're going through because we refuse to accept our assignment. Leandra is going off in these comments. <laughs> hey, Leandra, I love it. <laughs> What's up, Angel Nicole? Where you been? Tefano Fox, thanks for that five dollars super chat. Appreciate the love, Tefano. Woo, man, guys, if you want it, guys, everybody wants to know what's happening on the other side of that door with the NARC and the new supply. Everybody who came in late, hit the like button. Hit that like button. What y'all doing? Hit the like. Come on. Hit the like. Say, hey, we liked it. Go ahead, Chelly. Thanks for the super chat, Chelly. Chelly said, if you notice, my account has changed. The narc was checking my emails and changed all my... Wow. I was internet hovered. Crut ball. Guys, guys, guys. Because a narcissist knows that's the hardest place for you to block a narc. It's on your emails. I still haven't figured out how to do it with email. But I don't even look at the email. I see something come from, you know, somebody I don't want to talk to. I just delete it. I don't even read that mess. I don't need to know what they want to say. Because I know all they want to do is plant a seed. Guys, if you ever listen to the narc, the narc only wants to plant a seed, okay? That's it. And the seed they want to plant with you every time is the seed of doubt. If they can just plant the seed of doubt, then they have won. Yeah, you caught them red-handed again, and you tired of it again, but if they can get that seed of doubt planted in your mind, you will end up in a conversation with them, which leads to giving them a second chance or another, or what is it, 17, 1177 chance? What was it? What was my saying? 1577 chances. <laughs> Guys. You owe, you, owe, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. Okay? If you don't understand your assignment, it's because you refuse. You're refusing. When you're in pain, remember, you're in pain because something inside of you is begging for your attention. It's demanding your attention. When you're in pain, yeah, that nerve pain that you're dealing with, Something is demanding your attention. You're not paying attention to it. So now it's time. It's time. It's time to pay what's hurting attention. Danita said, until my dad passed, <clears throat> I'd do anything for his validation, love, and approval. 
Mm -hmm. It followed me into every relationship. It took a lot of therapy for this to click. Honestly, I guess I lacked the intuition. No, nah, no, nah, your intuition working. Intuition is working. Your intuition is working, but guys, sometimes we have been programmed to, to follow this over here. This devil is coming with something that is giving you pleasure in your mind. Y'all know what that dopamine feels like? And when they validate you, when the narcissist validates you, guys, we're sitting there thinking to ourselves like, man, this feels incredible. Finally, I've met somebody that really understands what I'm going through. That's how we feel at the beginning of it. But they, they, they quickly turn another leaf right over. Wow, Felicia said I was out of my league. I felt uncomfortable a few times. He upped the love bombing. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. That's how they do it, guys. Woo, Esther said, I heard you're only as sick as your secrets. So I'm exposing myself because I really want to get past this. I have no contact, but I'm still obsessed. Y'all see that right there? Y'all see that right there? Esther, Esther, that, my goodness. You don't, you will, you will know by the end of the night how that has helped you by just admitting. Guys, it's natural for you to still want to be with that person on some level. And even if it's not to want to be with the person, it's natural for you to feel the loss and to want to fix it. That's our nature. Why do y'all think narcs come for us? The narcissists come for us because they want somebody that's going to fix it every time they break it. Because they know they're going to break it repeatedly. The narcissist already knows before they meet you. Listen, I've done this before several times to everybody before you. I'm going to do it to everybody after you. Going to disrespect everybody on the same level. And it's going to get worse as we get older. Esther. That's how you cleanse your spirit. That's how you cleanse yourself. When you just can admit it. Listen, you know what? Deep down, I really wish that could have worked out. But accept the fact that it cannot. Because see, now you're at least you're telling yourself the truth. Okay, you know what? I do miss that person. Now let's go into it. What do you miss about them? The abuse, the lies. Which part? The love bomb. Mm -hmm, where they mirrored you. Where he came in and he told you everything that he saw. He already knew what you wanted to hear. We all want to hear the same thing. We want to hear how great we are. We want to hear that somebody actually will love us the way we will love them. That's all. That's all. And all they have to do is razzle dazzle it a little bit. Baby, you know, I, I know this is God. I know that God put us together. I know. And put a tear in that joint. Man, when they break you down with them tears, I know that this was God. I know God put this together. God brought you to me. You mine forever. And we buy it. We, oh man, we all in. They saying the words we want to hear forever? Forever, ever? That's all we wanted to know. We got somebody, look, I got a date for everything I want to do now. We can travel together. We're going to buy a crate. We're going to buy a house. We're going to have, we're going to have a pick, white picket fence. We're going to have a dog. We're going to have a couple kids. We're going to do everything. See, we sitting there like, wow, now the puzzle came together. And then the abuse starts. And then the devalue starts. And then the lies start coming out more and more. The lies that 
You know, they tricked us into believing that this is such a great thing. Yeah. Star Smiths, in five months, no contact. I knew better. My intuition was popping the entire time. Four years, I shut it down before I wanted the fantasy. There you go. See, guys, at some point, we realized, man, you know what? Uh, this ain't going to happen. I'm going to tell y'all, man. I, that's why I tell y'all this is a no judgment zone. I, I know I ain't about to look at nobody's situation with the side eye. Okay? <laughs> Long as I was in that crazy mess? No, sir. I'm not about to even attempt and say no. No, I'm not. Because I know what you're up against. I know what you're up against. When I make videos, I'm making videos about stuff I know I wanted to hear. I wish somebody would have told me and drilled it in my head. Every video, man, it ain't it ain't even possible for you to be happy with that person. You will never be happy with a narcissist. I, I just wish somebody would have drilled that into my head. If it was a video I could listen to, I would listen to it every single day. It is not possible for you to win with a narcissist. It's not possible. Okay, everybody always selling these candy dreams about how a narc can change and how you know therapy and then man, they a damn lie. You hear me? I said it, it's a damn lie. Ain't no devil changing for the better. You have lost your entire mind when you sitting somewhere thinking that the devil will stop being the devil for you. He came to steal your soul. He came to torture you while you're here. He came to put you in absolute hell. That's right. That Jezebel spirit came to put you and keep you in hell. There's nothing good about a devil. There's nothing good about a devil. There's nothing trustable about a devil. You're trying to trust a narcissist. There's nothing good about a narcissist. There's nothing trustable about them other than the abuse. They are very consistent and they will stay that way. They will stay that way. They're going to stay that way, guys. It's not going to change. The sooner you get out, the sooner you escape, the sooner you get your freedom. Man, listen, I, I, I'm saying this because I know what you went through. I know what you're going. You were the narcissist. You are in hell. We're thinking, of, okay, you're going to die one day and go to hell. Could you imagine being with a narcissist right now and possibly go somewhere after you die and it's worse than being with the narc? Where could you go that's worse than being with a narcissist? Huh? Where? With who? Huh? You think, you, you think you're not dealing with fire and brimstone right now? That narcissist is frying your mind every day, taking time from you. Your life has a time limit. Your life has a time limit. Okay, there's a limit on the amount of time you're going to have with your life. Okay, there's a limit on it. And guess what? This narcissist has an assignment on your life. I know you don't think you're that special. I know you don't. You the only, but you the only one that thinks that. You are the only one that thinks that your life ain't that special. That narc knows who you are. That narc knows how special your life is. That narc is simply there to waste your time, to assure that you will never live in your purpose. Y'all thinking, well, I got family. We, we have family and we, we have problems. So, no. You got problems that ain't going to never get right. You got more problems that you hiding, that you're ashamed of. Listen, guys, a life with a narcissist is a life of shame and dishonor disloyalty. Your entire life is a life of distrust, a life of shame. 
Yeah, man, I know that. I know there's some of y'all watching this video with the narc sitting right there. Yes, indeed. Smile for him. Mm-hmm. Your life is, if you think you're ever going to enjoy your life with a narcissist, it's not possible. Because you will never enjoy peace. Guys, the natural things in life, there are things that, of course, money cannot buy. There are lots of things money can buy. Okay, we ain't going to undermine money. No. It cannot buy you true happiness. It can buy you things that will make you smile. It will buy you things that make you feel good. But it can't buy you nothing that makes you happy. There's a difference between feeling good and being happy. Okay? And be being happy. What's up, Dawn? Yeah, it's been a minute. Guys, being happy, being happy means that you're listening to your body. You're listening to your inner voice. You have a connection that's tight. Your mind and your spirit are tight. You're listening to what your spirit is telling you. See, when you're living like that, when you're listening to your spirit, it's going to start changing the people in your circle, namely the devil. Yeah, it's going to start changing the people in your circle, guys. And that's a beautiful thing. Wow, Felicia said he asked me to marry him after six months. I picked the ring and then couldn't do a darn thing. Said I was frozen from the verbal abuse. The mask was slipped when I said not. Mm, mm, mm. I'm trying to tell you. That's why they got to get you swept up real quick. Not, a not got to sweep you up quickly because they know. They've already started to devalue. By the time y'all engage, the devalue has already started. You just not paying attention. You just high off of this love bomb. You still high off that love, the fumes from the love bomb. But trust and believe, you already know by the time that dust settles on that love bomb, man. Oh, good gracious. Jeremy says sometimes we get in these relationships and neither neither loves themselves but growing in love growing in love with each other consists of growing in love with ourselves and show them by example put dog hey jeremy can we just take our hats off of jeremy put that in a hey, jeremy salute champ because that was powerful man that was that's that's what this is all about my man just said it in a nutshell. That's what this is all about. This is all about growing in love with yourself. Guys, if, you, if you're thinking, I want, I want to just put this out there, and it ain't really a lot of nice ways to say it. But if you think you're going to be in love with somebody outside of you, and you don't love the person inside of you, then you're never going to feel true love. You're never going to feel it because you're running from it. You're running from it. You're running from it. Miss P said, you can't heal what you don't accept. Woo! Mm. God is love. The narc doesn't treat you. The, God, the, the narc doesn't treat you the way God treats you. God gave you life. The narc is trying to take your life. The narc is only there to keep you occupied. Guys, you're dealing with somebody that's on an assignment. I know it seems like they live in a regular life. Well, they have a business. They seem like they got their stuff together, blah, blah, blah. They, but they, they, not, they don't need me like that. Then why are they with you to torture you? Why? Why don't they just, why didn't they just leave you alone? And go ahead with the other per people that they were chasing while they were chasing you. Because they know the assignment on your life. And you're the only one that can't see it. 
the narcissist, this, the narcissist sees the calling on your life. You don't. You literally do not see the calling on your life. But you will do anything. Look, look at how we are. Look at how we develop. You will do anything to make them happy. When was the last time you did something that made you happy? When was the last time you did something just for you? Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. When was the last time you did just something just for you? Hmm. When is it going to be your turn to be happy? Hmm. Woo, Melissa said, the new supply becomes their mouthpiece and you'll be happy it's not you. Guys, when y'all dealing with a situation with the new supply, when you got a situation with the new supply and the new supply is running in, running interference because they want so desperately to hold on to the narcissist and they want to make sure you're blocked out, that's a sign that the, that the new supply is showing you Okay, they're showing you. They're not just showing you something. Okay, the new supply show. They're not just showing you something that, that, that to say that it's all about you. When they're running interference, they're saying, and they're showing you that the narc is talking about you daily. I know you think that because they got these pictures up. And they look so happy and blah, 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 that the narcissist could care less about you. They, that narcissist is talking about you every day. They are drilling a hole in the new supplies head about you. They're creating stories. See, y'all, they never told y'all that part, right? Narcissists are not going to tell you that they still ruminate about their, all of their exes. That's why they always reach back out to all of their exes. Even the ones that they know ain't messing with them. The narcissist is ruminating. When they're behind closed doors with the, with the new supply, one of the reasons that they want to, the new supply wants to run interference is because they can see the narcissist is still obsessed with you. Number one, the narcissist, yes, they're obsessed with you. Number one. But number two, the narcissist is also running game on them. And they're trying to prove their loyalty to the narcissist, to show the narcissist, look, you don't have to run this game on me. I got your back. I'm here. I'm down for whatever, baby. I'm your ride or die. They're trying to show the narcissist that they're going to be the best that they can be for the narcissist. They're going to be the best pawn in the game. They're trying to show the narcissist and prove their level of loyalty to the narc. And they see that the, and that's showing you that the narc has already started devaluing them. Guys, when somebody has your, when you're dealing with somebody, you're dating somebody, or you're about to get married to somebody, at that point, you're supposed to be in total comfort zone. Everything around you is supposed to fit right at that point. Okay. You're not supposed to have to be out here trying to run the new the person you're dealing with. You're not supposed to be out here trying to run their ex off to make sure they're not still chasing after their ex. Because the narc is lying on you. They're telling the new supply that, oh, man, he won't stop calling me or she won't stop doing little stuff, you know, to try to still reach out to me. They're lying to the new supply. They got the new supply thinking you are obsessed with them when you're trying to cut them off. Guys, the, and that's a sign that's showing you everything in that camp is a total illusion. It's a total lie. Everything is a lie. It's a false, a falsehood, everything about it. But we're sitting there wondering, but they got to be happy. Well, why are they over there? Why are they over there if they're not happy? Right? That's how we're thinking. Well, why, why is the narc over there if they're not happy? Huh? 
I'm, I'm hope y'all. I hope you're thinking and wondering why they're with that other person if they're not happy. Why won't they come beg me to take me back, to take them back? Guys, the reason that they're not, they're not going to beg you, not, not with confessions. Now, they will beg. They will get to the point where they beg now. Because and this is for the guys, for everybody who's gone no contact, salute, because y'all already know. The narcissist definitely will beg. That same person that you swore, you swore they would never. Oh, no, nah, they, they, nah, they ain't that type of person. Are uh, they too arrogant for that? Ain't no way they going to come in here begging. No. Ain't no way. And then you had to eat those words because now you see, oh, they do beg. Mm-hmm. What's up, David Birch? They do beg. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They will beg. They will plead. They will cry. They will fall out. They will put on an entire show. Okay? They will put on an entire show. Mm -mm -mm. And guys, don't think for one second that they're not going to weaponize sex with you. And I guess it's something that, you know, we, we run into all the time where, you know, we're like, well, the sex was good. And usually the sex was good when you wasn't getting nothing else. They had you starving so bad for anything, for any level of communication that did not devalue you. And even in sex, they're going to devalue you. And you still had to fake it during sex. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to step on them toes tonight, y'all. You had to fake it during sex with the narcissist. You have to fake it that, that, that it's so good, that it's so great. Because at the end of the day, guys, what I want to say is, if somebody, you're dealing with somebody who lies to you, cheats on you, steals from you, who's abusive towards you, when you have sex, when you're intimate with that person and they telling you that they love you and all that, you, the first thing that hits your mind is if you really love me, then why you treat me like this? Why you do me like this? If you really love me, but you ain't going to disturb the moment because, you know, we, in, we being intimate right now. So I ain't about to disturb it by bringing that up. But that's the first thing that hits your mind. Like, really, if you really love me, you, why are you doing me like this? Freaking, let's just hopefully because you're in your mind, you're thinking that the intimacy, you're thinking that the sex means they really love me because we wouldn't be doing it if they didn't really care about me. Yeah. My main man, true two in the house tonight. Thanks for Super Chat Champ. Been a minute, bro. So Tony Patrizzi said he only left because he went to prison. Narcs always come back. So it's been a year and a half. They going to be back. What's up, Kenny? So he worst pain. <clears throat> she has control over my brother. He is against me. He is one as well. A narc. My mom. Oh, wow. I am free. Take me out. <laughs> Do whatever you want. I'm following God's will. Now is perfect. That's right. That's right. That's right, man. Don't, don't get tripped out because they get other people. Guys, that's something that you're going to see as well. You'll see that some of your family members will side with the narc. Guys, I'm telling you, it ain't just... Narcissism isn't just in relationships. It's, you, it's all around us. You got family members that are jealous of your relationships. They're jealous of your accomplishments. And when they see you happy, they look at it like you're winning because they're never happy, especially, especially when they see you winning because they know that it's real when it's you. They know it's fake when it's them. They know they fake and they just put on a show for anything. 
Superman True True said, when you deny your when you deny your instincts and ignore the red flags and you knew better, what destroys you is the loss of your life and the time you spent having false hope. And that's what we feed ourselves, that false hope. We feed ourselves that false hope that, man, it ain't, it ain't, you know, man, you know what? I'm going to just focus on other things. I remember a time, and I'm going to tell y'all guys, I remember one thing that I remember about when I grew up, and I realized even this was something that harmed me in the entanglement. And that was, I was taught that also, we also heard this one, y'all, that you should never go to bed with a problem unresolved. You should always resolve the problem. Well, a narcissist is going to make sure that the problem does not get resolved. They're not going to participate in problem resolution. They're going to make sure you go to bed. They know that you heard that. See how they assure you that you were in the wrong relationship. I don't want to talk about it tonight. Can we not talk about it now? Can we not get this problem straight? That's how a narcissist, you know, wants to be in a relationship. They want to be in a relationship where they bring all of the drama and all of the problems and you want to talk about it and get it straight. You want to fix it. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's right, true, true. False hope. Ah, desire. <laughs> Desiree Desire said, can you repeat that for my friend? <laughs> Which part? <laughs> Woo, because we just, I'll gladly say it again. Because they like to sit back. Guys, so many people like to sit back and just analyze and just just, just try to try to make you think something wrong with you because you expect to be treated with respect, love, and dignity. Like it's a crime, like something wrong with you because you expect for somebody to respect you and love you. Nah, that ain't even real love. When, when you ain't, you're going to argue, you're going to have bad times, you're going to have down times. Why? Tell them to explain why you're going to have problems. Why am I going to have hard times? Explain that. Can somebody explain that? Why am I going to have problems with you? Why are we going to have hard times? Explain that. Is it because you're going to be cheating? You're going to be lying? You're going to steal from me? You jealous of me? You plotting on me? Is that why we're going to have hard times? That's what you need to say when somebody tell you that mess. I mean, everybody gonna have hard times and it's a relationship, really. So we go. So you don't even ask them. Just go straight to it. Oh, so you gonna be lying and cheating on me? No, I ain't say that. What you mean? That's what it sound like. You jealous of me? You gonna be competing with me? Baby, where you getting all that from? Why would you be crazy? No, I want to are you crazy. You sitting there telling me that we can't have a great relationship? The first thing come out your mouth is we're going to be having problems? Why are you bringing that into our universe? Why are you bringing that into the atmosphere here that we're going to have problems? Why? Why are you mentioning that? Because you know something I don't know? Because you can't assure me that this is going to be the love of my life, but you can assure me that we're going to have problems, that this is going to be painful dealing with you. You can assure me of that. Okay. I know what I need to know now. I know what I need to know now. Guys, listen. You cannot... You cannot keep walking straight. I don't care how good it feels. You're still going to be tested. You're going to be tested to see, to know if you're really ready to be in the right relationship. 
And if you're still somewhere where you're willing to just deal with abuse, you're not ready for a for the relationship that is best for you. You still want a superficial relationship because all this, all you're dealing with is something that's superficial. Either we've accomplished something financial together, or this person just looks so amazing, and we make such a cute couple. And everybody like us, and we get all these likes on social media. Man, that's the biggest joke. That's the biggest lie you've ever told yourself. That's one of the biggest lies you ever told yourself. We look so good together. Man. Man, oh man. Lawn Ornament said he's blocked on email and social media. He diverted that by showing up to my door when I was half asleep. I told him next time the cops will be called. Come over and knock on this door again. Police going to be tapping you on your shoulder. Okay? Guys, when they, guys, I talk to people every single day, not just one or two, that are telling me the results of the no contact. If you ain't no contact, I'm going to just tell you, you're not winning. You're not winning. Because the people who went no contact, they get to see it all. It is put, it's being placed right in your face. It's being placed right in front of you because you're showing obedience. You're showing that you actually care about what's happening to you, not which is what's happening to this narc. No. You're showing that you care about you for once. Imagine that, guys. Imagine that. Imagine you showing up for you. Standing up for you. Imagine that. You standing. There you go, Sharif. 50, 11 times. That's what it is. Y'all see how my short-term memory loss is? 50, 11 times. Good gracious. Guys, imagine that. Imagine one day you stood up for you. One day you stood up for your happiness. One day you represented what was best for you. Oh man, that's that's how you that's that's changing your life right there. That's changing your life. The day that you decide, I'm going to stand up for me. That's changing your life. You so worried about, man, if all you worry about is another relationship, man, you, you ain't here. You're going you gonna to still keep going, finding relationships. You don't wanna, that's what narcs do. Run from this relationship, I'm going to get in that one. I'm going to get in that. You can't spend two weeks just focusing on you. You can't spend 30 days. I'm going to focus on me. Let me get me right. Let me get to the place where I'm happy. Guys, what you, you and this is what I'm, I want y'all to understand. You ain't looking for somebody who's still in love with somebody else, talking about I'm ready for a relationship. You don't want that. So why are you presenting that scenario to anybody that you meet? You just got out of something. Give yourself some time. Give yourself some time. Because ultimately, you're looking for the love of your life. You're not just here to exist. You're looking for the love of your life. You're looking to fulfill the purpose in your life. You can you are not going to feel your per, fulfill your purpose in life dealing with the devil. You're not the, nobody's done it. Then you're going to be the first one. No, you're not going to be the first one. You're not going to be the first one. I know, I know it's going through a divorce is rough. I know it. Breaking up from somebody is the same thing. It's rough. Yeah, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's rough, but it's worth it. It's worth breaking up with the wrong people in your life. It's worth it. You ain't getting but one life. And it's a time limit on your life. We ain't just here, like, okay, when I get to 99, I'm going to hit the reset button because I don't, I don't like how that life went. That daggone narc never got it together. 
I could have been with somebody else and been happy. But no, I felt sorry for the narc. I didn't feel sorry for myself. I never took the moment and said, wow, man, do you see the condition you're in? You in here with somebody who's torturing you. Do you see what you're dealing with? You're dealing with somebody who hates you, who's jealous of you. Listen, y'all, jealousy and envy is a level of hatred. See, for somebody to be jealous and envious of you, that's somebody who knows you. They're jealous? Well, why are you jealous? They're jealous because they see something in you that they know they do not have. And you trying to be Mr. or Mrs. Humble. Oh, no, nah, that ain't, it ain't that big. It ain't, I, ain't, I ain't that special. I ain't nobody special. We always giving our superpowers away. We always undermining our superpowers. Like it ain't nothing. Like you ain't bringing nothing to the table. You think that Narc would waste his time or her time with you if it wasn't something very special about you? Do you think they would waste two seconds on you if they weren't getting something out of that deal? Huh? We already know a narc don't think like that. You already know they don't even think like, they don't move like that. No, they don't. True True said the narc wants to plant that seed. Mm. Woo! They want to plant the seed that they changed. They've changed for the worse. They won't do it again. Y'all can make it work this time. Woo! A hey, true too. Boy, you is you preaching on this one, champ. You preaching. How many of y'all don't heard that before? This time, it's going to be different. We're going to do everything we can do to make it, but we I know we can make this work. And you know why they know it can we, and then you know why it's so easy to convince you that it can work again? Because you already know you would do anything to make it work. You all you need, all you've been waiting for the whole time was for them to get it together. They're not coming to you to try to make this work because you keep bringing problems into the situation. They're coming back to you saying, okay, I've learned my lesson. That's what you're hearing. I've learned my lesson. And, and this time it's going to be different. This time I'm going to be sweeter. I'm going to be better. I ain't going to lie to you no more. I'm, I ain't going to cheat no more, baby. I promise you I ain't going to cheat. I, I never do that to you again. I never try to tear you down again. I never be this again. I never be that again. I never do this to you. I would never do nothing like that. And then it's going to change it too. I didn't do that. Guys, You the narcissist will confess that they did something and then lie about it and say, I just said that just to get, because I felt that's what you needed to hear so we could get past that. I never really did that. That's how double crossing they are. They will, they are going to double cross you. Guys, and also, when you're talking to the narc, we got to learn how to stop talking so much. Guys, we're giving the narc so much information. We're giving them just the keys to our soul. We're giving them everything. They ask us one question. Hey, babe, how was your day? Oh, man, you know, when I woke up this morning, I, I, I got out of bed, put my slippers on. I went to the daggone bathroom, had to brush my teeth. And we just detail, detail, detail. They tell you, tell them, how was your day? It was all right. And they keep it right there. And the reason that we, and, and this is what I'm, I want y'all to see it. I want you to know something here. This is the difference between a truth and a lie. The difference between a truth and a lie. When you're telling the truth, see, you're easy. It's easy for you to recite and talk and give details about everything because you're telling the truth. And if they ask you the question again, 10 years from now, you can tell them the exact same story, how it happened. You know why? Because you're telling the truth. The reason that a narc is going to be short with their answers, let me show it. Because they, they got to remember the lie they're telling you. Because they lying. And they're trying to, okay, I got to remember this lie. I got I to I gotta remember this lie. Because I'm lying. 
And I got to remember this law. Guys, that ain't what you want. That ain't what you want. True said, true, true said, <clears throat> they won't do it again. Y'all can make it work this time, but don't waste years of your life believing the narc's lie. Save yourself from the lies and live. Save yourself and live. What's up, Sergio? Thanks for that super chat, Sergio. Sir Sergio said, here we go again. She's taking me to court for the third time in less than two years. She get more desperate and reckless with age. God has my back. Hey, Sergio, I told y'all, man, once you get out, do not get buck wild. When they see you're serious, guys, and you won't talk to them, you think they're not going to take you to court? Man, I've been divorced three years. I had to, man, I stay in court. I stay in court. <laughs> Listen, man, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, man. When they see you not playing, when they see you're not playing, they begin, they become so desperate to just have a conversation. They never thought that they would you would have that much self-control. That you would one day you wouldn't even talk to them again. They never thought that you would stand up for yourself. The narcissist never thought you would stand up for yourself. Never. Wow. Danita said our almost 18 year old went no contact with them. They break all relationships. It's disgusting. They do. They do because they are reckless. They are wreckers. They're reckless. I think we need to call them wreck full because that's what they do. Star Smith said, yes, no contact <clears throat> and still obsessed. I'm there too. Man, listen, that's that's being not just being real with yourself. Don't one thing I don't want nobody in this chat doing is they and don't leave here lying to yourself about where you at with this and where oh no, I ain't on no contact. I'm this and that. Listen, you can be no contact. But still be truthful with yourself. Yeah, you know, I wish it was times that I had, I had times like that where I wish I just had closure. I wish I had closure. I didn't wish I was back with her, but I wish I at least had closure. Because I did not know at that time I would be giving myself closure. And that's the best closure, guys. I'm, I'm telling you from the other side, I'm telling you the best closure you're going to ever get is the closure you give yourself. Thanks, Esther. Mwah. Thanks for that super chat. <clears throat> the best closure you're ever going to have is the closure you give yourself. Because the narcissist cannot manipulate your closure. Guys, when you stop looking for them to answer any questions, I'm, I'm telling y'all, man. And it works on all situations of narcissism. It works on every situation. I'm telling you, guys. It works on every situation when you're dealing with a narcissistic family member or a co-worker, anything. I've had to deal with that with a narcissistic co-worker. You know, when, when we get to the point where, you know, people are going to test you. You know, and, and I'm in charge, with, you know, at my job, I'm in charge. So, but I treat everybody with respect. The respect, that, the respect that they allow me to give them. Because once you give me disrespect, then, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to be frank about it. You're going to hate working for me. You're, you're going to hate it. But I realize that even with people that get belligerent and out of pocket, guys, you got to know how to go no contact. I have had to tell a coworker. One of my subordinates, I have, I've had to tell the man, I don't care what you do. 
I'm not giving you any instructions. I'm not telling you nothing. You do what you want to do. If you, think, if you think that's how this works. See, once you present back to them that they are not moving you with their craziness, they got to figure you out again. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What did you mean? You, you, you don't want me to do this? You don't want me? I ain't telling you nothing. And that's how you're supposed to leave a narcissist. I'm not telling you anything. Man, if y'all only knew, if y'all only knew, man, how discarding a narcissist, how discarding a narcissist and not giving them closure, if y'all only knew the condition it leaves them in, y'all think that you missed the narc? <laughs> Whoa. That narc will, you, they will, I'm telling you, they don't know how to get it back together. They don't know how to get it back together. They don't. They absolutely do not. Lika, mwah, thanks for the super chat, Lika. Lika said, uh -huh, welcome, Rolf. Say, I invited a friend tonight to the family. Say, he needs to know the truth and get loose from the circumstance. There you go. There you go. You have to. You got to know what you're up against. You're not up against something that's going to come. See, in your mind, you're thinking, what can I do? That's what you're beating yourself up about. What more can I do to please this person? What more can I do to please you? You're doing everything. You're doing everything you can. You've given them everything. You've given the narcissist undeniable access to every part of your life. Anything that that narc wanted from you, you have opened your life to give them. <clears throat> Anything. You have broken every rule that you have ever had dealing with that narcissist. Every rule you've ever had dealing with the narc, you have broken every rule. Every boundary that you have, non-existent anymore. Every boundary. Mm, mm, mm. Man, Chad said my issue is that I moved on, but go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. He hovers and is the only person that loves me and supports me. I never had support in my life. No one to really to rely or lean on. Y'all think that narc don't know that? Chad, if you think that narc doesn't know that, I'm sorry to tell you, my friend. But the narc does know that. In those intimate conversations, y'all just really spilling your guts and, you know, yeah, I had a hard life and I went through this. And they listening because they're strategizing on how I'm going to get you. Yeah. Oh, let me. Oh, you didn't get that? Okay, I'm going to give you that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be that for you. They're going to be that for you for a quick moment and then the devalue starts because they like, hey, I know your weaknesses now. That's how you can tell a narcissist comes to you with the mindset that this is war because all they want to know is your weaknesses. That's all they want to know. They want to know your weaknesses. They want to know how to pull on your heartstrings after I'm, when I start abusing you. Listen, the war that they're, that they're going to rage against you is when I start abusing you, when I start abusing you, you're going to feel sorry for me. You're going to tell yourself and convince yourself that the only reason that this fool is abusive to me like this is because of what they went through when they were young. Because of a lie that they done told you. People who are abusive are abusive because they are that. Okay? Good people are not abusive. Remember that. Good people are not abusive. Good people are never abusive. 
That's not what they're here for. Danita, mwah, thanks for the super chat, Danita. <clears throat> Danita said, the trauma bond with a narc is an addiction and equally powerful to heroin. That's that dopamine. <clears throat> guys, we talked about that so many days. To be honest with you guys, we're, we are drug addicts. We're addicted to that dopamine rush that you get when somebody is telling you all these wonderful things about yourself. That's what we feel. We feel like a puppy. You know, and the owner comes home and you're just wagging your tail, hoping that the owner want to pet you and, and, and tell you how much they love you and kiss all on you and snuggle with you and everything. Mm -mm -mm. Danita said you can and will break it, but it will take work praying for everybody. <clears throat> I'm glad you said that like that too, Danita, because... Because the first thing that you got to look at is you got to stop claiming that. Y'all got to stop using that language. I'm trauma bonded. Because you bond yourself to something by just speaking it. Remember, your word is powerful. The words you speak are powerful. You're putting words out there. And we stand behind our word, guys. You're not the liar like the narcissist. The narcissist say anything because they are natural liars. They lie about going to the bathroom. They tell baby, we're going to the bathroom. And they went downstairs to the kitchen and got some water. And you're like, I thought you said just going to the bathroom. No, I didn't say that. The, the narcissist is a natural liar. I know some of y'all think I'd be extreme with them. No. <laughs> Natural liars. And they have to, in order to stay good at something, you have to practice it all the time. The best liars are the ones that lie every day. The best liars are the ones that lie because they love it. And the narcissist loves to lie. They love deceit. They love keeping you in confusion. They love keeping you off your purpose. Their purpose in life is to keep you from being on your purpose. That's their purpose in life. Wow, Brooke said it took me 17 years to figure out what I was dealing with. I'm finally free. Guys, I want y'all to know that's a real thing. That's a real thing. When you can't figure it out, that's a real thing that you're in there and you're in there trying to, you're trying to rationalize something that's irrational. Miss P said, I binge watch videos on narcs until the wee hours of the night. I refuse to let that devil snatch my soul. Hey, hey Miss P, I used to be like, I'd be at work, man. I just, I'm listening to them joints all day. I used to be like that because that's that's what's helping you out of it. When somebody gives you some clarity because you have so, the cloud in your mind is so thick that you need somebody in there to clear that up for you. Wow, Chad said, three months, no contact. Letters, phone calls, stalking me at the bars. Oh, no, you say you gave in. Well, you know, sometimes we do that. We do it. We do it all the time, man. And, and guys, I don't want you to beat yourselves up when you when you get weak and you used to come to, you know, like I went on and talked to them and you know, tried it again. And because the thing about it is, you're always going to end up right back at the same place again. Because they're just going to prove to you. They're like, okay, you didn't believe it last time. I'm going to show you again. I came to destroy you. Guys, and all they're looking for is for you to just feel sorry for them. Be nice. I'll pretend to be nice with you. I'll play fair. They give you the illusion that they're going to play fair. They give you the illusion that it's going to be different this time. I really love you. I really care about you. 
Wow. Thanks for the super chat, Lawless. Lawless said, my energy is a struggle after narc abuse. It is. It, 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 it absolutely is a struggle. Trying to stay positive every day after somebody, you've given your all to something. See, see, guys, that's how you can see that we live a life in truth. Remember that. Lawless is saying right here, man, my energy is a struggle after narc abuse. In, the reason why your energy is a struggle is because, number one, we are natural people. And we believe that if we do unto others as we want them to do unto us, then that's what comes back to us. We put good out and it has to grow back to us. Guys, but what you and I made the same mistake, the mistake that we make is, is that we continue to do good even though we see with our eyes, we hear with our ears, we feel with our hands and everything else. We smell it, we taste it, the deception, the lies, and we ignore it. We keep moving forward with a liar, a deceiver, a user, an abuser. We keep walking forward. We keep walking forward with somebody that has bad intentions for us. And that's how we deceive. That's how we deceive ourselves. LG said, I, I still don't understand how I ended up with a narcissist. I didn't understand what was going on. There's nothing like this. Hey, and there you go. And, and again, the, the reason you were able to end up with one, because they know who you are. You don't know who they are. They know who you are based on your conversation. We're not looking for people to be bad people in the first and in initial conversations. The narc is looking for you to be a empath. You're a builder. You're a fixer. You're going to fix this mess that I make because I'm going to make a mess. And it's going to be a mess too. And you're going to fix it because you like, because you get gratification on fixing and helping people because you wanted somebody to help you when you needed help. Guys, we are real easy to figure out. And that devil has figured it out and put nothing but deception in the game. Angel Nicole said, my ex sent me these emojis after over a year, the mask had fallen. It makes me sick seeing how calculated he was after the fact. Yeah. And that's what they do when they have another supply. They feel like I can be arrogant because I got another supply that's not going anywhere. They're not going to leave me like you did. They're not going to, you know, they, they truly believe that the other person isn't going to leave them. Hey, Chad, I mean, sometimes you got to make a decision. What is it going to be? Are you going to be happy or are you just going to be a doormat so that somebody else can be happy? You know, yeah, that's what's on the table. Your happiness, that's what's on the table. The narc's happiness is not on the table, y'all. If you're dealing with, if you're in a relationship, with, listen to God, if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, Guys, period, point blank. Your happiness is the only thing that's on the table that's being negotiated. You're not going to negotiate the narc's happiness. No. A narcissist will not deal with you if their happiness is at stake. They're just not going to, they have no interest in that. They have no interest in that. Hey, Chad, you saying the narc is the only one that cares about you. What about you? 
What about you? Do you care about you? That's what's more important. Stop building this narc up like, like he just came and saved your life. You got to love you. When And until you do, you'll continue looking outside for people, somebody to love me. And the moment somebody pretends they care about you, you instantly believe that they love you. And then they start, uh, they start torturing you and abusing you. And then you try to figure out what did I do wrong this time? Same thing you did wrong last time. In the time before that, in the time before that, you never made amends with you. You never got your relationship straight with you. And we all go through that. Long ornament said, the narc always told me I had the perfect life. And then he tried to ruin it. But I got out before he did. Dawn said, I'm so happy. I'm finally past everything. Best feeling in the world is not being in the hell and mind torture anymore. Good God. Hey, Dawn, thank you for putting that in the chat. So many people need to hear, need to know what's on the other side. Guys, imagine your life. Imagine, just, just if you will, for a moment, imagine your life without these headaches, without worrying about this person lying to you, cheating on you, stealing from you, abusing you, torturing you. Imagine your life waking up one day and you're actually happy. And not because you got this money that just came in, not because you're with this person right here. You're happy because you love the person you see in the mirror. Imagine that. Imagine that, guys. You're happy because you woke up another day and the person in the mirror, you're proud of that person because that person has morals. That person is a leader. That person absolutely is in love with themselves in a positive way. Imagine your life waking up. Imagine yourself waking up tomorrow. Hey, Chad, everybody has to go through that, though. You know how many people? Let's, let's talk real quick about that. The, the, the frenemies and the family members, you know, all that. Listen, first of all, most people in the, 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 this in a family with other people, most family members don't really get along the way it appears. It's just, hey, we haven't seen each other. Hey, nice to see you. We're good, good talking to you, blah, 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 whatever. You may not have an enemy. If you're the type of person where you're a loving person, you don't know other people's issues. You didn't grow up in their house. You don't know how they see you. Anybody in this world telling you they got more than one real true friend doesn't really know the definition of a friend. Okay? We throw those terms around so loosely. Oh, no, no, no. I got all these friends and I got all these. So listen, listen. Having a true friend hmm, and you're still looking outside of you. You're looking outside of your truest friend that you're going to have in this lifetime. Do you understand that your attraction, the thing that is in you that attracts people to you is your energy. And if you're putting out positive energy, you're putting out energy that shows you care about yourself, that you love you. What's up, Darcy? When you put up, when you put that kind of energy out there, that helps people to see. They want, that makes people gravitate towards you. But when you put the energy out there that you don't like who you see in the mirror, that's the energy that you're putting out into the universe for everybody else to feel. 
like you don't even like yourself. Why? Why? You've got to. You've got to have an amazing relationship with you. That's right. Tell them, Dawn. Hey, Dawn, tell them, stick your chest out. It feels amazing. It feels amazing having a great relationship with yourself. To some of us, we think being with self is loneliness. But guess what? You've never been lonelier than when you were with the narcissist. You've never been lonelier than when you deal with a narcissist. That's right, Bernadette. A life of total shame and hell. When you're living with the narcissist, guys, it's a life of shame. It's somebody shaming you regularly. Okay, I'll get you, Chad. I understand. You know what I mean? People out here was born, that was raised without their father. So a lot of people raised out their mother and their father. Listen, you got to make friends with the person you see in the mirror first. Stop making your life about everybody else. Stop making your life about everybody else. They are not going to get you. Stop worrying about it. It's not going to change. You think, man, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. The day I stop giving a damn about what other people think changed my life. That was the day my life truly changed because it wasn't just the narc. See, guys, when you live your life and you're trying to prove to everybody how cool you are and you're trying to prove to everybody what's how much of a nice person you are, you're searching for their validation. It means that their validation is more important than yours. And I promise everybody and anybody, and I'm not saying this to put anybody's validation towards me down. I'm saying, listen, I validate me. And I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. I love and appreciate validation coming to me. But I want every I, and I want you to feel the same way towards me. The validation I'm giving you, I want you to feel the exact same thing. That I don't validate you. You validate you. Because I surely validate myself. Okay? I validate me. I'm not giving anybody that kind of power. Because look at what it gave you back. Look at what it gives you back. You're trying to get close to God. What's stopping you, though? You know, that, or getting closer to God just simply means you listening to your inner voice. You can't, you can't get away from God, like it or not. You can't get away from God. Listen to your inner voice. Listen to your intuition. We call it intuition and inner voice, but that's your connection to God. That's God talking right directly to you. Your intuition always tell you to do the right thing, right? <laughs> that's how you know who it is. Mm -mm -mm. What's EMDR therapy, uh, Danita? I'm not good with the, <laughs> you know, I am definitely on the slow bus with that one. Definitely. Woo, True 2 again. Thanks for that super chat, True 2. True 2 said, what we miss is the height of the roller coaster ride. Woo! When it all was good and it was going very well. Woo! Right before the free fall to absolute hell, heartbreak, heartache, headache. 
without a parachute. Woo, you had to enjoy it when it was good, but now it's over. It's over. See, uh, that's how we get in the beginning of it, guys. When we're in the beginning of something, we're going, starting to go through something. In the beginning phases, we thinking that it's all everything is the narc, the narc, the narc, the narc. And what we don't see is, is that we allow the narc to become our obsession. And that's all the narc was planning. That's how they created themselves in our life. That's how they placed themselves in our life as our obsession. Because... They came in and validated you. And then they pulled that validation back. Now you searching for the validation. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You done told me all these wonderful things about myself. Then now you acting funny. What's going on? Trina Valentine said, found out he was cheating on me before and after we got married. Wow. It's like I knew him. In, I knew him out. I threw him out. And began to work on myself. Cheating before and after that, man. That hurt right there, man. That, gosh, that, it, that's, that's painful to find out how you have been betrayed by somebody you just trusted openly. And you said, I am not going to even think a bad thought about this person. Even though I see, I see signs, but. I'm not going to think bad. I'm not bringing that into my marriage. I'm giving this 100% of everything I got in me. And then you find out that sorry, no good, trifling, crut ball was dogging you the whole time. You was trusting. You was trying to overlook all of their shortcomings. They was dogging you the whole time. <laughs> Tucci Cat said, Hey yo, you right because my ex narc left as soon as he, as soon as you came on. <laughs> Say, while well, he fake fake visiting his son, saying, I don't like this dude. You dated him. Y'all seeing each other. <laughs> man, oh man. Yeah. No, no, they don't want to hear none of this. I'm just trying to tell you. Listen, I done had a lot of had women that told me they done got threatened. But watching my video, getting caught watching my videos, getting threatened. I don't like him. I don't need, we don't need him on in this house, period. We don't need to hear nothing he's talking about. Because he is destructive. He's trying to tear our relationship apart. <laughs> I sure am. Yes, I am. He's right. I absolutely am. I want you to be free. I want you in no bondage. The, the worst, you know, my worst fear for all of us guys is that you live your life doing the right thing for the wrong person. That means you're living your life in vain and in pain because you're not going to feel better after this. It's not going to come together. That person has bad intentions on purpose. Okay, you only must make mistakes once the first time. And they keep making the same mistake because <laughs> it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake, guys. Danita said they don't love or appreciate you, but also don't want anyone else to have you because they know your value. Oh, man, textbook. They know your value and you don't. That's the painful part of this. You don't know your own value. You don't know that there's somebody out here that's just like you, that wants what you want, that wants it as bad as you. You don't trust it. I want you to look at yourself, though. I want you to look at yourself in the mirror, and I want you to tell the person in the mirror, somebody out there that is for you, wants everything that you want just as bad, if not more than you. The person is for you. They're going to want everything you want and they're going to want it just as bad or more than you want it. 
the peace, the loving relationship that you desire. Guys, I don't want anybody in here to have to go without true love in your, for your whole life. I don't want anybody to feel that. I don't want anybody to feel that. Haka said, I do something for me every week. Mm, Finago said, once they notice mm, that you notice your purpose is full-fledged competition. It is, y'all. They not working to help you. The narcissist is not on the team, y'all. The narc is not on the team. Derek said, man, I'm blessed to finally get away. It still takes time to recover, but my life is becoming happy again. Man, listen, you wouldn't respect this process. You wouldn't respect happiness if you just woke up and snapped your fingers and you were happy. There wouldn't be a reason for you to focus on who's supposed to be in your life. I want y'all to remember something. Guys, the person you choose in your life, that's going to be the most important decision you make in your life. You know why? The reason that that's the most important decision you make in your life is because the person that you truly love, you will do anything for them. You will do anything just to see them smile, just to see them happy. The narc knows that. The narc has weaponized that against you because they know that you'll do anything to make them happy even when they're doing everything to make you unhappy. You still find a way to justify buying this for them, doing that for them, doing something small just to make them feel good, to make them feel loved and wanted. Um, so Scorpio said, everything the North finds absolutely irresistible and great about you, they will definitely start to hate about you and try to change those great things about you, beware. They try to change you. And if you stay around them long enough, you'll see it. If you stay around a narcissist long enough, you will see it. You will absolutely see it. Leandra's still dragging them in here. Keep dragging them, Leandra. Angel Nicole said, I found out he had a woman looking me up or whatever, I blocked all of them, even the ones I wasn't sure of. That's how you're supposed to do it. Whoa, try it with Nikki said, the narc I dated is a pastor, and the discard crushed me. He cheated with an old supply, and he's hiding her. And ain't nothing, ain't nothing. Yeah, we be thinking that, you know, a lot of times we be thinking the pastor can't be there. The deacons, the ushers, man, listen, the devil is in the business of torture. The devil, misery loves company. The devil is miserable. The devil just wants some company. The devil know he not getting off. He know he ain't getting away with this. Kanita said, the new fake friend trying to get, get me back in with NARC. They both are sick. Stalking me now. Wow. Shaniko said, why daily? I'm thinking you saying, why do you reassure yourself daily? Because when you break up with somebody, you need that. You need that reassurance every day that you're going to make it, that you're going to be happy. You've got to become obsessed with your happiness, not with what was making, what you feel was making you sad. You know, and if you're dealing with a narc, you're dealing with betrayal. Wow. Chad said the new supply caught them in bed with each other and the new supply had a partner. 
because they don't care. They, they don't care. Cheating is, cheating is a part of narcissism, y'all. Even though they say some marks don't cheat. Oh, boy. I think that's delusional thinking. If you think your narc ain't cheating you, man, you're delusional. You're delusional. Only time a narc is doesn't cheat is when they can't get another supply. That's the only time they're not cheating, okay? A narcissist is only as faithful as their opportunities, okay? That's it. That is it. They're only as faithful as their next opportunity. Mm, mm, mm. Tell them true too. True too said, never underestimate the narc's hate for you. Boy, oh boy, have I done that. Mm, mm, mm. Hawker said, I was begged several times. They going to beg. Oh, my gosh. Woo! Go ahead, Danita. Don't forget their threats of suicide. I'm going to kill myself. Man, oh, man. Oh, my goodness. They pull out all the cards, yet still there. I'm a, I don't want to live if I can't be with you. Really. <laughs> they don't want to live if they can't be with you. But for some reason, they can't be faithful. For some reason, they can't stop lying. They can't stop cheating. They can't stop abusing you. But they want to die if they can't have you, right? Disha says... Sex is the only time you really connect with the narc. And you know what? I disagree, Disha. That sex is the only time you're going to get with the narc and then not just totally abusing you. And that's what makes you think that it's good because you're thinking in your mind that, okay, we were, we're intimate and they're telling me that they love me and whatever. And... They're not saying horrible things to me. But that comes later on, right after that. Woo, Star said, so hard to believe that he would ever beg. He was so arrogant and entitled. Hey, Star, just ask a few people in the huddle about that one. <laughs> Everybody who I've ever heard say that, nah, there's no way this fool gonna beg. Now, they ain't going to beg if they don't have to beg, you know. You know, they still got access to you and stuff like that. Ain't no need to beg. They're not missing anything. That's right. Derek said the sex was only to please them. Hmm. Y'all, believe it or not, a narcissist is not really a sexual person the way you think. They're really not. That's right, Felicia. They need that positive and that negative. They have to have both. They have to have both. That's why they act so crazy with you. Because they have to have somebody to beat up on and somebody to be nice to. And when nobody else will deal with them, they got to come to you. They got to beat you up. And they got to be nice to you a little while later. That's exactly how it works. Mm, mm, mm. That's right, Kanita. They cheat with people that you know. And the person for surely went for it. Mm, mm, mm. They, they love to cheat on you with somebody you know. <laughs> Danita said, the, the relationship with a narc will have you hit your knees and find your way back to God. That's for sure. Yes, indeed. Wow. I'm so Scorpio said, my body started to reject him sexually. 
my mind couldn't fool my body no more. Mm, mm, mm. I'm so Scorpio. Thank you. Thank you for putting that. That's that's what I was saying, guys. You, you, you we, we try to fool ourselves again. You're trying to fool yourself to make you think this sexual experience is so fantastic. And it's happening with somebody that's for the streets. They doing it with anybody. There's nothing special about sex with a narc. Because a narcissist is for the streets. They are for anybody who wants it from them. You are not getting anything special. No special treatment. There's nothing special about it. Nothing. It's just, the, well, I guess the thing that you're getting out of it is they're not devaluing you the entire time. But the, and, then, and then let me take that back because they are devaluing you. Because when you're sexual with them, you're still remembering how much they dogging you. You still remember. And you try to forget it. When, when y'all have sex, it's like, okay, it's a do-over. We, we did it. So we starting over again. That's how you look at it. They don't. I'm so Scorpio said, I couldn't fool my body that this was not of God. And my rejection was an automatic association of me association of me cheating maybe because i was starting to love me and you know what and you know what guys that's that you again the master manipulator the creator of the lie the creator of deception the narcissist is a perfectionist when it comes to flipping the script on you oh but you cheating on me you deny me you cheating on me Oh, who you? Oh, I, I I knew it. I knew I knew it was somebody. I knew it. I already had. I already know who it is. They're gonna flip that thing on you because what you're not gonna have around a narcissist is control. Okay. Ebony Berry said it's not a real connection. Just trying to use and abuse you. Then once you expose them. They try to flip it on you like you were the problem. Come on. Come on. Speak on that, Ebony, because that's everybody in here is dealing with that. Woo, Sharon Gordon said it. When they see you in a new relationship, it's going to drive them crazy. That's why you don't go running out there into a new relationship. Because when you do what they did and go run to the first person and run the first thing, uh, two days after y'all broke up, the narcissist knows you haven't even gotten over them yet and you're in an old new relationship. They know it's not going to last because they watched how their relationships never last. They know that you're doing the same thing that they do and they know that at some point you'll be in something that's so bad you'll start to look at the narc like, oh, okay, here we go. Maybe I need to roll with you because, man, this crazy fool I just met Whoa, I thought you was bad. They really bad. Man, true, true, you ain't never lie. Never underestimate the narc's hate for you. And the hate grows. When you get away, the reason for this is the narc feels that you should have been broken before you left. Wow. Should have been destroyed before you shouldn't have gotten away. That's how they feel. Wow, Felicia said, the flying monkeys were begging me to give them another chance. Said I blocked them too. That's right. Block everybody that you got to block. You got to fix you, guys. That's right, Brooke. That future faking, man. You already know. All lies. <laughs> Denita said, problem, problems are when somebody forgot to put the dishes away or you got to work late. Not they're cheating, betraying, and disrespecting you. These fools are trash, hey, Danita. That's what I'm saying. When you say for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for sickness, for sickness and in health, you're thinking for better or worse means that 
okay, if they get sick, I'm, I'm here for you. You know, the car broke down. Now we got to use one car till we get it fixed. That's what we thinking when we talk about hard times. We ain't thinking, oh, they lie, cheat, and steal from you to buy gifts for other supply. That wasn't what we see. If somebody would have told you that's what they're talking about, and that's something everybody should know because that is what they're talking about. No, we was talking. They talk. We talking about cheating on you and lying on you and, and bringing nasty diseases home and everything. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. That's exactly what they're talking about. Woo, Haka. Thanks for that super chat, Haka. Haka said, almost two years of disrespect, disloyalty, and dishonor. They will bring out the worst aspects of you. It's best to get away. They'll never appreciate you. Mm, mm, mm. Did she say never, ever? Never, ever? Narcissist not going to appreciate Even when you're gone, even when you leave, even when you go no contact, don't think that they're going to appreciate you. Now, they may have a, a new find, a new respect for you because you actually stood up for yourself. Yeah, believe it or not, a narc will respect you guys. When you go, no, when you're strong enough to go no contact and stay that way, believe it or not, they actually respect you because you stood up for what was best for you for a change instead of what they had for. They know that their plan for you is total destruction. Okay. No, thanks for this, which I leave. Like I said, God has, God has this. In our one angel, okay. In our one angel, he's strongest angel. That's Michael, the archangel, angel. Satan is a copycat. See, I personally think the devil's number one demon is Jezebel. I, I totally agree. That Jezebel is the worst ever. Jezebel is the worst because Jezebel. It's the lionest, triflingest, cruddiest, dirtiest, crut ball of them all. Jezebel is the spirit that gives somebody the power to be able to lie to you and you ain't even ask a question. It gives them intent to deceive you about everything and anything. Everything. That's right. Tell him, Shelly. You're going to find another narc. Heal and develop self-healing. You've got to, you've got to work on you guys. If, it, if Listen, if your healing doesn't start and end with you, because see, we're talking about you being healed. We ain't talking about healing somebody else. We're talking about you personally, your healing, your process. And yes, it's a process. Thanks for that super chat, True Two. True Two said, "You won't, you won't fulfill the purpose of your life. Waste time trying to convince somebody to love you, because that's what you're doing. You're trying to convince some somebody to love you, like, mm, like you don't feel like you really just deserve it." based on how you treat them. Mm, mm, mm. And now you're overcompensating. Who doesn't say somebody, you trying to convince somebody to love you who doesn't even love themselves. One bad apple ruins the bunch. Yes, it does. Thanks, Haka. Mwah. Thanks for that super chat. Haka said, the narc told me while crying hysterically, I want you to experience pain. This is the drive of every demon that lives in a narc. The call to cause you pain on purpose. It is never on accident. Get what, guys? Y'all better listen.
to what this young girl is telling y'all. Because she's definitely on point. And they will come to you like that. And they will tell you that. When a narcissist is really desperate, they will tell you, I'm going to do something to you. I'm going to bring you pain. I'm going to make you feel this. And they will attempt to do anything that they can do to ensure you get that pain. Yes, they will. But when they openly confess, I want you to feel pain. Trust and believe, guys. They want you to feel what they're feeling. They want you to feel low because they feel low and they feel dirty because that's what they're doing. They're doing dirt. Miss P. Mwah. Thanks for the super chat, Miss P. Miss P said, when I went and started no contact, I said anything has to be, anything has to be better than being with this thing. Once I felt that peace, I was sleeping and eating good, laughing again. No way I'm going back. Two years, no, two years of peace and freedom. No contact. Guys, when you see it, when you get it, mm, mm, mm. wow, Felicia said, oh my God. <laughs> it is, the, it's the victim's fault that they lie and cheat. The per, it's your fault that they lying and cheating on you. <laughs> That's what the narc is. That's what they want you to believe. It's your fault that they lying on you and that they cheating on you. There you go, Chelly. Thanks for the super chat, Chelly. Chelly said, God is bigger than anything you have endured, everything you've endured. Now we have been through, now we've been through the trial. Let go and let God. I mm, I'm a living witness that he's sovereign, um, omnipotent, and will change you inside and out. Forgive and move forward. Hallelujah. Forgive and move forward, people. You got to. There's no other way out. You have to let that situation go. Obi-Wan said, my narc tried lying to child support and only got 59 bucks a month. Stupid games win stupid prizes. <laughs> Whoo! What's up, Maddie? <laughs> you like that one, uh, I'm so Scorpio? wreck full instead of wreck less they wreck more <laughs> the narcissist is wreck more okay <laughs> Woo. rosalind jolly said new narc pop up pops up narc free four years new narc new narc from the past on on the phone three four hours The old high school narc thing disappointed, then disappointed, now not grown up, mm, just have more toys. Y'all notice that you know ain't nobody got no happy endings with narcs. <laughs> there's no such thing. Well, I ain't gonna say there's no such thing because there truly is a happy ending with a narc. You know, you happy you that it ended, you're happy that you're out of it. You're happy that it's over, that it's done. Breakthrough 101. Mwah. Thanks for that super chat. Breakthrough said blessings and love. Thank you, Mr. Harry. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's how you got to see it. That goes Steph Lee. Robbie J said they are very sneaky but very dumb also. Facts. What's up, Maddie? Ooh. 
Woo, good gracious, y'all. What a beautiful day. Thanks for that super chat, True Two. True Two said, Job said, the thing that I fear the most has come to pass. And if you fear the narc leaving, you fear the narc leaving you, you have already lost because your discard is certain. Mm, you right about that. Whatever it is that's going to bring you pain, that's exactly what you're going to get from that narc. Tanya Graham said, my narcissist knows that I'm on to him because I told him I know exactly why he's doing what he's doing. I'm stronger than I've ever been. I know what to say and what not to say, if need be. So if he knows that you know, trust and believe he is looking for a new supply to replace you because he knows it's just a matter of time before you get out of it. He is on a hunt for Red October, but he's been on the hunt because he's been he's seen in the past. He's already seen it. You know, you're starting to question him. You're starting to second guess him. He knows what that means. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. She already sees. Let me get her and get somebody else. Shari says, I know leaving was the right thing to do, but the struggle is real. Going no contact is the right thing. But this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Why is it the hardest thing you've ever done? Because you think you love the narc. That's what it really is. You think you love the narc. You really just infatuated with the narc. No, I really love this narc. What's, tell me how you can associate love with abuse. Love with torture. How can you associate love with hell? No, you're infatuated. Okay? We, we can't redefine love. It has a meaning. It's universal. It's consistent. Love is God. It's trust. Come on. Love is God is trust. Thanks for two dollar cash app, Eleanor. Mwah. Appreciate you. Unique. Appreciate the love. Yes, I do. I'm trying to. Tell, I'm just trying to tell you, man. We be thinking that we love that person. For somebody, for you to love somebody, y'all know it. Whether you know it or not. That person has to allow you to love them. You can't just walk up to somebody and just be in love with them. They have to be open for it. And the narc does give you a small window in that love bomb phase. But they backing away from that before they start to feel that way towards you too. They don't like that feeling of not having control over their emotions and making emotional decisions the way we do. A narcissist feel like that's weak. That's weak. They, they, they feel like you'll get to walk all over me like I'm going to walk all over you if I feel like that towards you. So that's not even what they're looking for. No, that's not what they're here for. Hey, Chad, say that prayer for you. There you go. Pray for you. Stop making everything in your life about doing something for him. That's our biggest problem, y'all. We, we determine we're going to fix the narc, man. Because we see the possibilities, the potential, just a little potential of what we could be. You know, and then we look so good together and we'd be buying into that whole dream. We do. We buy into the entire dream, guys. Oh, man, True 2 said, the lie that the narc fools you into believing is that you're not good enough. Yeah. Right. 
You're not good enough, so you need their validation. Absolute truth. Absolute truth. But that's not your truth. God created us all, and our Father loves all his creations. The knock will be judged for what they did to you. And that's the right thing. Why wouldn't the narc get, you know, the 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 happiness that comes with karma? That's right, Lika. Nobody people really don't talk about how this connects to this Jezebel. That's that's the devil. That's the devil's minions. That's doing the person doing the devil's work. Jezebel, that's a person doing the work of the devil. And we can call it whatever we want to call it. It's the devil. That's the guys. The only the devil's main job is is to keep you deceived and to keep you in a place where you don't you don't stand on your own ground. You're standing on their ground. You're standing on uneven, unsteady pavement. They have to have you that way. Mm. True, true said, if you make the narc your prize in life, and when you get old and you have nothing but the narc, you will be miserable in the end. Wow. Because your prize will have cost you your life. See, that's another way you don't even see how the narc takes your life. Because they tricked you into staying with them. They tricked you into thinking that nobody else out here will want you. And you never even tried. It's a trick. That's how they weaponize language. Stephanie said, really, God should be your friend. Your true friend, because he always has your, an ear to hear your problems. He's always there, even when you don't think he is. Even when you don't want to listen to what he's telling you. So you've been begging God, Chad. But you're begging God to make somebody else right for you. That ain't going to happen, champ. That person got to want to be right for you. And he's showing you he don't, he's not going to be right for you. He's showing you it's not going to happen. He's giving you every detail that you need. He's saying flat out, look, it, this ain't going to end up good for you. No matter what. This person, the one that you see the potential, which y'all could be, it ain't going to be that. He going to be with this person, that person. And, and you know, you already know how that goes. That's right. Thomasina, that's right. The change in the man or woman is the one looking back at you in the mirror. Make the change. Thanks, Rochelle. Mwah. Thanks for that $5 cash out. Make the change. Thanks for that super chat, Danita. Mwah. Danita said, best advice I ever received. Nobody is coming to save you. Mm, mm, mm. Whoa! You seen that video? <laughs> you are going, you are the light at the end of the tunnel. You are the light at the end of the tunnel. So until people truly accept that, they will be forever stuck. Nobody's coming to save you. Guys, I want y'all to know something in this in this huddle. And I want everybody in here to really hold on to this. Right here, we are giving you tools that are going to help you help yourself. Okay? Nobody's coming to save you. 
God is already walking with you. God is in you to ensure you have the right direction. All you got to do is follow it. All you got to do is follow it and you will walk right into your purpose. You will walk right into your purpose. Now, if you think you got the better solution for your life than what the solution that God has for you, then you go ahead and keep trying your plan. But I think you can see that your plan ain't working too good. I think y'all can see that. Brown girl, mwah, thanks for that super chat. Woo, brown girl said the new supply was a blessing. Man, if y'all only knew. If you only knew. And, then, and this is what I'm saying, guys. The new supply is a blessing. And they're a blessing because... But they're not a blessing in a good way because they didn't do what they did to help you because they care about you. No. No. They were a blessing because they occupied that fool long enough for you to be able to get away and get out. TT. What's up, TT? TT said, I said it. <laughs> said, I said it out the night. It's true. Don't let what don't let what you want make you blind to what you really what really is that what hold up, what got you a lot of us in a terrible place with the narc. Don't let what you want keep you blind. Keep you blind to what you really need. Mm, is what got you into trouble with that narc. Guys, that's what keep a lot of us in pain. Because we because we got to have what we want. I want that. I want that. And then you listen to songs out here. I be listening to sing. You watch social media to tell you. No, no, no. I want to be with somebody that wants me. Not somebody that needs me. Really? <laughs> For what? Because that's what I want. I don't want somebody that needs me though. Guys, when you when you tell the truth about love, when you tell the truth about your purpose in your life, you're going to want to be with somebody that needs you because you know you need them. That's right, Mike. You got to got to clean your heart up. Got to have a clean heart. You got to, man. Mm, Beamers of Lee said, I've been staying strong with no contact with my North ex. She's blocked on everything and, and blew my phone up in the middle of the night just when I thought. <laughs> She finally left me alone. It's not, guys, when y'all walk away, man, you'd be surprised. They looking for you to buckle. They looking for your knees to buckle. They know you scared. They know you're going to be scared that you're going to be lonely. Everything. Whoa, Choo Choo said the pastors, some of them just want to lay hands on people. Everybody this week, yeah. They be in there looking for victims. They be in there looking for people that they can take through this. Wow. Yeah, that's right, Miss P. We do. We got to get passionate about ourselves. You gotta be passionate about yourself, man. You got to be. You got to be passionate about yourself. Mm, mm, mm. MCL said my ex narc cheated on me with my faraway cousin. Damn. Say I never even knew she existed. Say, until I went through those to his phone. Man. 
Crud Ball. Goodness gracious. Mm, mm, mm. That's a headache right there. Somebody to go into the fam go to the family functions looking for a victim, looking for somebody to date, somebody to dog you, somebody that you know, somebody you related to, so that every time you see that person for the rest of your life, you get that. The first thing that come in your mind is what they did. Mm, mm, mm. Susan said, I can't even, can't even be in another relationship. They always destroy it. Don't think that you, when they see you out there dating and you serious with somebody, you don't, you think they're just going to sit back? Man, they already know what you got to offer, guys. They know what you have to offer. They know what you have to offer. But they're banking on the fact that you don't know. They're banking on the fact that you do not know what you bring to the table. And honestly, what's up, Peaches? Honestly, most of the time we don't know. Come on, Choo Choo said, you don't love that person. You love that drama. Whoa! Your childhood trauma has conditioned you for trying to see your parents make it work mm, you experience abuse bro. wow bro you dropped it right out the sky on that one you trying to fix that relationship that your parents couldn't keep together you promised yourself i'm gonna keep my family together i'm gonna keep my situation together you ain't keeping it together with a narc Danita says it's the, it's the disposability. They don't really discard because they mm, because they come back. They always come back, people. But they do dispose you like trash to break you. They want to break you down and keep you accessible. Mm, you ain't never lied. Shelly said, I'm rebuking all, all astral projection out of this huddle tonight god is bigger than satan satan doesn't have a chance hallelujah talk to him tell him tell him man you can't but you can't beat god you can't come on man mm -mm. they can't this devil can't beat god if we if the devil could beat god would none of us be here it wouldn't even have a purpose in our life because he would destroy every last one of us Every last one of us. That's exactly what it would be. Tushu said, tell them, we win. We escape with our freedom. Now, <laughs> all she said, now all we have to do is fix ourselves. Go ahead, Shelly. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that super chat, Shelly. Shelly said, if God brings you, <clears throat> if God brings you to it, he will bring you through it level up if god brings you to it he will bring you through it mike said you're in this position because the father don't want you in that we all have a better purpose and it's a safe and it's to save others mm -mm -mm. we all have a purpose to save others lives Mm. in the soul you get favor for leading in righteousness mm, mm, mm. come on speak on favor diana said divorced ex narc in may now he's hovering starting mm, stating the new supply was nice and now she's a fake <laughs> i told him that's not my problem so I'm finding a piece. You know, hey, Diana, I'm just saying, how does somebody get like that? How does somebody get to that level where they get 
that confident after they after y'all got divorced because they won't do right. And they feel like you owe them. After they done did all this dogging you, you owe me. We 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 gotta give it another chance and come on. No, I don't owe you. Thomas Cena said, I treat the narc that I reside with like a damn skeleton, like the plague, no speaking, nothing mute. Got my strength, power, and boundaries back and excited about the move. There you go. That's what you need to be because your life is about to start. You might be alive, but you're not living when you're dealing with the narc. Because they're you're dealing with mm, you're dealing with a, you're dealing with the devil. How are you gonna be alive? How are you gonna be really living and enjoying your life with somebody that is just there just to make sure you don't? Miss P, mm, thanks for that super chat, Miss P. Miss P said, if we if we ask ourselves why we love the narc, not why we think we love the narc, what would the answer be? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, there you go. Something emotional. I think that I really, you know, felt like this and it don't even matter. It don't even matter. Mm, mm, mm. True, true said, I'm an empath. Thanks for the super chat, Chan. Said, I'm, a, I'm an empath. I had, I had to accept that I couldn't fix the narc and accepted my failure because the narc the decision not to be made the decision not to be fixed the narc refused to change the the, the narc is not going to change what's up rosalie me myself and i there you go hey guys we've been in here for a minute had a great session in here tonight though man had a great session in here tonight man i love the talk Guys, tomorrow we're gonna do. I'm gonna do a video, man. We're gonna put this thing out tomorrow, man. We gonna. It's not gonna stop. I'm gonna talk about how this narc meant to do what they're doing to you. Everything they're doing to you, they mean to do it. It's on purpose and with a purpose. Everything they do mean to you is on purpose and with a purpose. Listen, guys. Thanks. I thank you all for coming out tonight. For sharing your stories, man, that's that's big. That's big. Lika, mwah, thanks for the super chat, Lika. Lika said, "I do need prayer. Please pray for me that the chains will break loose from me. No one understands like the people in, in the channel. I need the prayer. Prayer words. I better show this woman some prayer. Let's give her some prayer. You know." And, you know, she's reaching out, you know, and we're going to pray for you, Lika. We're going to pray. And we all, I'm, I myself want to ask God to give you what you want, what you need. Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely everything that you want, everything that you need. All you got to do is trust it. God hears everything that you tell him. He's watching everything that you're going through. And you're going through it with a purpose. Because there's a purpose on your life. Remember that as you walk through your journey. There's a purpose in your life for this. That devil's only purpose is to keep you bound. To keep you not living in your purpose. Hey, Charlie, get in here. Talk to Lika. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is accept it. Accept it that you heal. Accept that you're strong. Accept who you really are. Remember, the most powerful thing in the universe is a made-up mind. When your mind is made up that something is going to happen, it's going to happen. 
But what have you made your mind up about? Make your mind up that you want to be healed, that you want to be free. Because when you want it bad enough, there's nothing that can keep you from it. Nothing that can keep you from it. When you want your happiness bad enough, there's nothing that can hold you back from it. Nothing. The most powerful thing in the universe is a made up mind. When you make up your mind, you're going to that you're going to be happy, you're going to be happy. Because you're not going to allow anything to stop it anymore. And yes, we are going to keep on praying for you, Lika. True, true said, my ex narc was sexually abusive, sexually abused as a child that damaged her. My love for her is raising our four kids, for our kids, well, and protecting them from her. And sometimes that's what the assignment is. You do. Sometimes that's what the assignment is. Hey, y'all, let's put some peace, some love. Let's put some prayer in this chat to help. You know, Miss P said, I pray that God loose the chains of the narcissist holding on you. I pray you turn to God. Trust that this isn't the life God had for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Man, I'm going to tell y'all. I'm so, That was a beautiful prayer, Miss P. That was a beautiful prayer. Mm, mm, mm. There's nothing more powerful than a made-up mind. Man. Nothing. There's nothing more powerful than a made-up mind. There's nothing that you can't have that you want. How bad do you want it? How bad do you really want to be free? Yeah, I know what it's like, man. To, that daggone rumination haunts you. I know what it feels like. How bad you want to be free. Because you're going to free yourself from that. Why? Because you're going to have to help others free themselves from that. And you're going to have to know every detail of how you did it. Everybody in here you all are going to touch and talk to other people that you're going to help through this. Everybody in here, you're going to have that. That's part of all of our assignments. We are helpers. We are builders. We are builders. Mm, there you go. Shelly said, Lika, God, I ask you to cover my sister through your healing process and remove anything that is not of you out of her life. Her life goal, deliver her. Oh, God. That's right. Rosalie said, the word of God says that he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. Keep your eyes ahead on Jesus so that you may have God's blessing and promises. Look here, man. I don't know if y'all can see it or not. You're in a special place. You're in a beautiful place and you are covered. You hear me? You came here and you got undercover when you came here. You got people in here that love to pray. You got people in here who is on their assignment, who on their job. Look at Shamilia. Father God, I pray for all of your children in this chat who needs that peace and healing. Please remove everyone who should not be in, in their lives, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Parker said, Lika, may you have peace and the strength to endure as you heal, be comforted in knowing that you are not only one, the only one who has experienced this pain, but it is possible to have joy again. 
Thanks for that super chat, Shelly. No. Shelly said, God, I ask you to place Lika in your arms tonight. God, remove anything that is not of you out of her life right now. Not tomorrow. She needed now, not, not next Wednesday. She want to be free. Guess what? I ask you to restore and move in her life. God, deliver her, oh God. So, you know, as we've been taught how to pray, mm, look at that true to say, Lord, I ask you to give Lika the strength to find her purpose. Her heart is weak, but build her up, Father, and have mm, and have her find her with that in, with what's in your will and live as a child of God. Priscilla said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come together before you. Mm. Touching and agreeing with your word. It says, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the mix. Please help and bless your people tonight. I'm going to say one that's a little different. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to say one that's a little different. I'm going to say, I'm going to call on God to do what he said he going to do. God didn't tell us that he might help you out if you need it. He said, if you ask, it will be done. And I'm asking. I'm asking right now that it's done now. Because she said she needed now. She needed tomorrow too. <laughs> and next week. But she needed every day. Right? Lika, you going through something and it's a reason that you're going through it. We all went through it. We all know what you're going through. And it's something better for you. It's something better for you that's coming. This is a light day. This is a light day. You ask God for it, and it's yours. All you got to do is claim it. He said, here it is. All you got to do is claim it. All you got to do is accept it. What could be better than that? All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is say, okay. I accept it. Thank you. That's all you got to say. Thank you. That's all you got to say. Thank you. It's mine. That's it. It's mine. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy every single day. I'm going to be happy every day. I ain't going to let this hold me down no longer. I want to be happy. And I'm not accepting no. I want to be happy. Go talk to the woman in the mirror. Tell her that you love her. Tell the woman in the mirror that you love her. 
and that you're going to get through this. Tell the woman that in the mirror, I love you. And I'm not going to let anything stop me from this and being happy. I'm tired. Of it. I'm not I'm not doing this no more. I'm not going to do this any longer. I'm not going to continue to feel down. I'm ready to smile because I'm happy. I'm ready to be happy. But I dealt with that other stuff. We ain't got to get emotional about it. All you got to do is claim it. Claim your happiness. It's right there. It's already in you. Tap into it. Claim your happiness. Tap into it. God said, whatever you ask for. He didn't say some of the stuff you ask for. He didn't say I do it sometimes. He said, you ask and you will receive. You shall receive. He didn't say you might receive happiness. No. He said whatever you ask for. All you got to do is receive it. We ask for things. We do. Then we want somebody to go get it for us. We want somebody to go do it for us. Mm -mm, it's your turn to get it. It's yours. Your happiness is here. It's right now. Right now you get to live. You're living in a day and a time. You live in a day and in a time where you control your destiny. And now you're being put to a test. This, this, this is for several of us. You are going to be tested. There's nothing in life that comes easy that's worth that's really worth having. And now, now that you have made it clear what your position is. Accept what you have to do for your happiness. That's all. Accept the assignment. Accept this assignment. Just accept the assignment. I want to be happy. What's stopping me from being happy? Hmm? I want to emotionally feel happy. Mm-hmm. How can I do that? How can I emotionally just feel happy? What's stopping you? Because I remember what somebody did to me. You do? Once you start to remember what you did to you. Remember when they was doing what they were doing to you? And you was walking along with it. You were trusting something in a process that no. This process don't feel right. This don't feel good. And you kept walking it because we was taught, we were groomed that way. I'm going to keep walking and do the right thing. But you knew doing the right thing, it didn't feel right. It didn't match up. It didn't look right. And it didn't feel right. But you did it anyway because you were taught that that's the right thing to do. The right thing feels right. It looks right. It feels right. It smells right. When you touch it, it's right. Okay, when you smell it, it's right. When you're doing the right thing, the rights line up. You want to be happy? Give yourself some of that love you gave that devil. Give yourself all that love right back. Start right now. What's stopping you from starting right now? What's stopping you? You don't know how to do it? 
but you knew how to do it for the devil? How is it that you can't love on you, but you can love the devil? You know how to do it when it's for them. But when it's your turn to receive it, you don't even feel right. You don't even feel right telling yourself I love you. You don't even feel right. You see what this devil has done to us? You can tell that person you love them every single day and mean it. At least think you mean it. And none of those days you can't tell yourself, I love you. I adore you. I admire myself. You're bold, you're strong. You're everything you've ever wanted to be. You're everything you've ever wanted to be. You have endless potential. Why can't you build you up? We're giving you the tools. You are going, listen, you are the light at the end of the tunnel. You are the light at the end of the tunnel. You know how that expression went? Oh man, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. That light is you. That's what's saving you. Your ability to simply become one with yourself. Your mind now is in unison. It's in sync with your spirit. You don't think that's something to be happy about? Listen, everything that you want, God got that covered. But God knows that if you don't have your mind matched up with your spirit, it is all in vain. You're just going to give it to a devil. It's all in vain. True to said, tell yourself no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. And by his stripes you are healed. That's right. Tell them. Tell them, everybody. You got to love you, man. You got to learn how to love you, man. That's what we here for. You got to learn how to love you. You've been focused your whole life. A lot of us don't really see that. You've been focused your whole life on loving somebody else. Not you on loving somebody else. You've been focused your whole life on loving somebody else. You've been taught and teach and followed through with, if I do this, I'll keep this love. It's going to feel the right. It's going to this. It's going ain't doing nothing for you. Out here trying to force something to work with somebody. Still neglecting you. Thanks for that super chat, Icy. Mm. Still neglecting you. Still neglecting yourself. That's right. That's right, Chad. You're perfectly made. You are perfectly made. Lika. Listen, don't get it confused. We are designed for one another, okay? Men and women, we are designed to need one another, okay? We are, but we don't need the wrong ones. No, we don't. We do not need the wrong ones. We want the wrong ones. You are the best thing that's ever going to happen in your life. You just don't trust it. You just don't trust the process. You just don't trust yourself. You've been taught to work against yourself. 
You are the best thing that's going to happen in your life when you connect with you. Hey, Lika, God got you. You still breathing. Your heart, that heart that failed on you still working. You still here. You got a purpose in your life. Stop feeling sorry for that woman in the mirror. That woman in the mirror is a warrior. God ain't wake you up today to fail, man. You think God gonna just waste his time to wake you up to fail? That ain't what you here for. That ain't what you here for. God brought you here to win. He brought you here for a reason. He got a divine purpose for your life. Stop fighting it. Stop fighting it. Stop fighting it. You got a much higher purpose here. You got a much strong, much bigger purpose here. This, this ain't the last stop for none of us, man. This ain't the last stop for none of us, okay? Don't nobody in here, please don't be deceived. This ain't your life. This is a start for everybody. Because you're going to help people. You're going to help people in ways you never knew. Because as bad as you think your situation is, I guarantee you, you're going to help people that are going to show you and prove to you your situation was not as bad as, as what you thought. <laughs> okay? Thanks for that super chat, Harker. Harker says, ooh, practice speaking positive, loving words to yourself. When was the last time you spoke nicely to you? And said it in a nice, calm voice. Like you're like, you know how God talks to you? He talks to you in a way where it's so calm and soothing that so it's easy to, to ignore it. It's easy to ignore it. Because God ain't disrespecting you. You will see your your overall health improve. Stop binding yourself with negative words. Do not put yourself in a prison. You are not captive. You are free. You are free. Do you understand what that means? That means you fought with the devil. A lot of y'all don't even see it. Man, a lot of you don't even understand you see what you're feeling and you know it's different than anything you've ever been through, but you don't even give yourself credit for winning a war against the devil. You done been to hell and you don't even realize it because you've been taught that hell is something else. You've made it through hell. Woo, thanks for that super chat, True Two. True Two said... When you find out the narc doesn't love you, always remember that God loves you because God promised it. He will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake you. God can't leave you. He can't forsake you. God is in you. God is your purpose. God is your divine purpose. Trust and believe your story. I, I promise you, your story is not as bad as you think. Sometimes we got to see how bad life can get before we start understanding, wow, I don't have it as bad as I thought. We do. 
Thanks for that super chat, Rosalie. Rosalie said, Lika, sing to God. Regardless of the devil's attack, still lift up and praise to God. Praise your way out of this. The devil don't got you beat. You know, that that is truly beautiful to say that that way. Sing to God. Lika. It, not just Lika, everybody who's going through this. Everybody who's going through this. You think that you're not going to be tested? You didn't think that we just hear and you just get to, you know, I get to skip that part. Oh, that pain over there? I get to skip that, man. Hey, uh-uh. No, sir. No, we don't get to skip that part. How are you going to help somebody else through this if you ain't been through nothing? You think you're just going through this for you? Listen, your assignment is you are a builder. Okay? You're a builder. You know what that means? That means you help people. It means you love to see. You, you feel good when you see people feeling better. When you see people feeling good. When you see that you're helping somebody feel better. You're a builder. You ain't, this devil ain't got you. Man, please. This devil can't do nothing with you. But try to deceive you, try to make you think that you, you ain't strong enough to make it through this. You already won. You already made it through it. First of all, you've already made it through. Now you're just trying to get your thoughts back. Now you're just trying to get your mind right. Yeah, you was in hell for real. You didn't even know it. Hey, Anna, vacation was incredible. Thanks to the Super Chat Hawker. Hawker said, God hears the prayers of the righteous. You are free. You are free. There go Charlie. <laughs> I knew it. Boy, y'all better start recognizing the assignment that God got on your life, man. Y'all better start recognizing the assignment that God got on your life, man. That's real. Hey guys, I'm gonna tell y'all, man. I, I've been fighting my whole life against the assignment God had on mine. Okay, I have been fighting my assignment my whole life. <laughs> Listen, you ain't actually breathing real air. You ain't even. You ain't got. You're not alive. Okay, you just surviving until the day. You accept your assignment. Good God, man. I, I can't even explain that one to you, man. You're not alive until you accept the assignment on your life. You hear me? You're not alive until you accept the assignment on your life, man. And a lot of us, we get tripped out about I don't want to seem like I'm just this religious fanatic and all this. I like to act a fool sometimes. God ain't tell you what you, you know, that, well, of course, he's going to say something. But realistically, guys, you ain't doing nothing so far out of pocket. Okay? God know who you are. God ain't going to give you no assignment if he know you ain't right for no assignment. God ain't just putting you on his team for nothing. Woo. Thanks, Charlie. Charlie said, I want to save my soul. <laughs> I want to save some souls tonight, Harry, yo. Ooh, if you want to be saved, you can just say and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead 
and you will be saved. Just say, I believe. Glory to God. Whew. See, Shelly understands that there is an assignment on her life, y'all. Shelly, Shelly thought that she went through. Shelly was just in your same shoes two months ago, Lika. Shelly, Shelly was in here, man, going through it. And not, it wasn't just no two months ago, she was going through it for a long time. Man, Shelly came through here and see at the time, hey, Shelly, did you know the assignment that was on your life then? Huh? Did you know your assignment then? But look at you now. Getting bolder every time she say something. Shelly getting bolder every time she speak. <laughs> Ooh, good God. Hey, Shelly, hit him with that hammer. <laughs> Shelly come in here with a hammer, y'all. She is not playing. She is not playing. Woo, Tasha Cobbs, break every chain. <laughs> Woo, man, oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. I got to look that one up. Thanks, Rosalie. Rosalie said, we, have, we already have Shelly playing. Now let us add praise and worship up in here. For some real breakthroughs. Good God. Praise him. I'm going to tell y'all, man. You know, it just ain't nothing like being in the right place. Doing the right thing with your life, man. Sometimes, y'all, we given, <clears throat> we gave so much power to other people that we don't forgot who we are. You done gave so much control to somebody else. You have forgotten who you are. When you look in the mirror, the reason you ain't in madly in love with the person in the mirror, because you don't even recognize the person in the mirror no more. That's the only reason you're not giving yourself that unconditional love that you so desire. Because you ain't giving it back to you. You wonder if you're wondering why it ain't in your life and it ain't coming to you, because it ain't coming to you because you're not giving it to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's serious, guys. You got to give yourself that love. It starts with you. God is already in you. It ain't no way. If you in this chat tonight and you ain't feel that, there's no way you felt it. Whether you want to admit it or not, you felt it. Everybody in here felt that. That's God talking to you. We done got so spooked out about God, and that's what this devil wants. The devil wants you confused about your connection to God because that's how he can manipulate you. If you don't know your connection to God, this devil is going to simply confuse you. That's his job. That's his only job. Chutu said, what a lot of us are battling is we trying to choose the north. That's right. We trying to choose the north. We trying to find a way. Man, how can I just what can I do to make them act right? When God wants us to choose him and his purpose for our lives, quit fighting and let God in. That's right. You're going to be attacked. Mm-hmm. Every time you go to another level, it's going to be a new devil. You think the devil want to, you think that, see, the thing, we, one of our major problems is, is that we don't see the purpose in our lives. We don't see what God really has for us. We just kind of walking around willy-nilly like I ain't that important. 
because you don't know your assignment. And you ain't even looking for it. You ain't even looking for it. You done gave up. All you worried about is, man, can I just have my devil back? Mm-mm-mm. You asked for prayer? <laughs> Look at that chat. Look at that chat. Good God Almighty. Look at that chat. You got too many people. You got you got too many people that want to see you happy. You know why they want to see you happy? Because they want to be happy too. We all do. That's our purpose here, to be happy. God ain't wake us up to fail. God wouldn't have woke you up today to fail, to be miserable, to be disappointed, to have no confidence. He wouldn't have woke you up for that. God woke you up today because he got a purpose on your life. And you're going to stop playing with him. You're going to start playing with him, man. You're going to start playing with him. God woke you up today because he got a purpose for you. You're going to stop playing with him. That's what you're going to do. You're going to stop playing. You're going to stop playing with God. He got a divine purpose for you. And you're going to stop playing. You're going to stop playing. He ain't got you out here for nothing. He ain't got you out here for nothing. You may not see the value in your life. He got you here for a reason. And everybody and anybody, everybody already knows that Your purpose and your level of success in life, it comes and it goes just like that because you don't control that. You, we don't control that part. See, we can believe and we can work hard and we can do what we got to do and this and that and all those things. And the thing about it is, guys, we would become so arrogant that we start to believe that it's us. No, I made this happen. I'm the one doing this. It's not you. You are not in control. And that's one of the things that we have a free will. You have a free will, but you are not in control. And God can give you everything you want. All you have to do Stop playing and line up. Line up. Just stop playing and line up. That's all. Line up and do what you know your spirit is telling you to do. Do what you know your spirit is telling you to do. Your spirit ain't never lied to you. It's never forsaken you. It's never led you down the wrong road. All we got to do, all we got to do is listen. Follow. That's right, Miss P. That's why God is God. That's right, Haka. We are strong in God. Thomasina, God is in full control. Just like that. And mm, we can talk about that forever. 
<laughs> we can talk about that forever, man. Because at the end of the day, y'all, that's how it works. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all see the difference in your mood? Just like that. You're going to start playing with God. That's all. Stop playing. Stop giving all this power and control, to, trying to give it to this devil. Because he ain't going to get it. He's not in control. The devil is not going to win. Never has and never will. And that's why he hates us now. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. That's right. Look at God. Look at God. Just show up and show up. Y'all see that? You see how fast your whole life can change? Just that fast. And change your whole mood. You said, I'm going to try. Lika, how you going to try when it comes to God, but you do when it came to the devil? It was nothing you wouldn't do for that devil. It was nothing that you wouldn't sacrifice for that devil. When you going to do that for God? Huh? When you going to put yourself out there like that for God to say, you know what? It's time for me to step it up. It's time for me to do what's best for Lika. That's all God wants. God just wants us to do what's best for us. <laughs> That's all he really wants from us. Man, do what's best for you. He's like, now you can follow me. Because that's what's best for you. What's best for you is what God wants us to do. That's what's best for you. How will you know? Because he telling you right now. I can't tell you what he got for you. I can only tell me what God got for me. And I'm going to tell you. Man, I'm going to tell you, God has done just so much over me and in my life, man, that, you know, don't think I don't get tested. <laughs> don't think for one second it's like that because I absolutely, I absolutely get tested. Daily, <laughs> you know, but I love it. I love it because I see what God has done for me, man. I, I, I trust God. I trust it. I trust the process. God has given me anything that I want, man. He's given me everything I want. He's giving me what I need more than anything. He's giving me what I need. And I'm saying that, guys, at the end of the day, if you're not picking, if you're not picking what God has for you, if you're not picking and choosing the absolute best thing that could ever happen in your life, which is, you following what your spirit is telling you. Not me. The only place I'm going to lead you is back to you. I'm going to help you see, hey, 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 you all over there and you all over there. But you need to get right back and realign with yourself. You better get realigned with your spirit. It is the only thing that has your best interest. Okay? You are the light at the end of that tunnel. God said you can have anything you want, right? You really believe that? 
if you really believe that God will give you anything that you want, what are you willing to do to have anything that you want? I mean, it's just a question. What are you willing to do to receive that? Because at the end of the day, guys, everything you've shown already, you've already shown that you know how to do the work. You just was doing it with the wrong people. Why is it that difficult to do that same work for the right people? Why? Why is it difficult for that? <sighs> that was refreshing. Thanks, Allison. Thanks for that super chat, Allison. I would say thank you, God, for not giving up on us and for delivering us from the evil ones. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you see how this all led right back to God. Everything, everything we talked about. See how it led right back to God. You want to understand this devil. Okay, we had that. <laughs> now let's understand that it's something that we still have to do. You still have an assignment. You still have an assignment on your life. You still have an assignment. Okay. You still have an assignment on your life. So understanding the devil. Okay. We'll go through that. But remember. Remember, never forget the team you plan for. Never quit the team that you plan for. You got this. You just want to feel better, right? You see how easy that was? Well, ain't nobody talking about nothing spooky in here. <laughs> Y'all see how easy that was? You see how easy it is to change that energy? And you know why? Because you're in here with people that have had that same fight. You're in here with people that had went to hell bought and bought you the keys. Huh? <laughs> People don't went to hell for them keys. You in hell. And we passing the key. That's all. We passing the key. We can give you the tools to get out of there, but you got to do the work to get out of there. There you go. You got to help others out. You got to help others out. Guys, listen, I want to thank everybody for coming in here tonight. This has just been a game changer. And I think it's a game changer for everybody. It's letting us know that you, we all have an assignment. We all have an assignment. We all have an assignment. We are here with a purpose for a purpose, for a reason. Mm -mm. Your day can change just like that. All you got to do is ask the right person and the right person is right in you, is right in the mirror. <laughs> Whoa, man, God made it easy for us, y'all. He made it easy for us. Ask the person in the mirror. Come on. Come on. Oh, man. True to say it. Lika, read King James Version, Matthew 7. 
chapter 7, verse 7 through 12. Ask, seek, and knock, and ask God to show you the way and meditate on it. That's right, Miss P. On your assignment, on your job. That's right. Because that's what it's all about, y'all. It's all about being on your job. We love helping. We love helping people. Like it or not, that's what you are. That's who you are. Like it or not, that's who you are. And, and you love it. You love it. You love being who you are. And you love the assignment on your life. Just accept it. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Sergio. You love the assignment on your life. Man, y'all, listen, y'all not hanging around us for, for nothing. Steel, sharp, and steel. Steel, sharp, and steel. You working with God. It's only two options. You either gonna work with God or you gonna work with this devil. That's it. Those are the choices. Now choose. You already know what you're doing. Hey guys, thank y'all for coming out, man. For everybody in this chat tonight, could God Almighty. I man, all I can say is, you know, again, I take my hats off to you. Because what I see, what I'm a part of here, man, mm, mm, mm. you want to be happy, choose something you can be happy about. Every time I see somebody who, who was down and then I see him turn into this, the, the people I see in this chat, y'all think that anybody in this chat got the perfect life? Y'all think that anybody in this chat don't go through it daily? Let me help you out. Everybody in this chat, you got something poking at you every day. Something. And still we rise. <laughs> and still we rise. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. Incredible, man. It's incredible. Woo! <laughs> man, let me get out of here. I got to work. <laughs> I'm off tomorrow, so it's like one of them Late, late nights. But guess what? It's all in love, man. Y'all put some love and some peace in the chat because everybody got to know that we come in peace and we leave in peace and love. That's right. Peace and soul. Train. I'm going to see y'all on the next one. All right? Whoa, man. Y'all done tore the chat up tonight. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. It was all love hanging.